Listen to how pleasant this is. Good morning. Oh, my God. I hear people say that all the time. Hey, good morning. It must be that new car of yours. It's yes, that's what it is. Good morning. I'm a disc jockey. Good morning to you. It's going to be a beautiful day. Is that your version of a pleasant voice? I guess. I don't know. Here's mine. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You can use that one. I like yours. Your sound is like a, a manic uh, puppet. A good boy. <laughs> I am a manic puppet. That might be why that happened. We sound so different in the morning because usually I wake up and go, oh, God, not again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Today I thought my alarm, this is too loud. Like it had a moment where I go, is there a setting on this? This is insanely loud. But I think I was in also there that. There are settings. Mm -hmm. That felt, it was the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life this morning. Okay, you're going to run this by uh, Rudy. You probably know about this already, but I ran this by Brittany already. I watched the news this morning and it's so horrendous. I, it got me in a good mood because it's like, I, I can't even deal with these people one-on-one, -on -one, even though I'm not talking... You know, there's people you run into in the street. Um, two things happened this morning. One I thought was hilarious, actually. One not hilarious in the least. You want the hilarious or the serious first? Let's do serious first so we can end on hilarity and then okay, go off that. And you might not find it hilarious. I just do because okay, people, then... people are getting more effed up every day. I'm a little worried with what, the My option I My personal politics is going to run your life. No, it's not. Get away from me. Yeah. Why are people into that now? My politics are all that matters. Tell me the serious one first. Serious one first? Yeah. Okay, what was the serious? Oh, Marion County, Florida. Okay? I was telling Britt Brit this. Oh, already. this mm -hmm. is bad. Uh, kids are playing in the street. They're bouncing a ball in the street. Apparently, one of the neighbor women thought it was too loud. The bouncing ball, not screaming. Sure. Just a bouncing ball. So uh, her answer to that was to go next door and kill their mother. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. What? You didn't see that twist no. coming. What? My. M. Night Shyamalan has nothing on that. Um, <laughs> exactly. That's so sad. He shot the mother. Okay. Okay, do me a favor. What? Just because I had this set up and I was so blown away by what you said. Say that one more time. And then she went next door and killed the mother. Oh, damn it, it didn't work. Never mind. All right, I was going to do the big sting because I, th I didn't think you were going to go like... Dark. Yeah, dark, dark. Here that is dark, man. Well, I thought I thought you were going to have like a jovial kind of like, yeah. guess what happened? To no, no, no. Oh, I, didn't I do you have a jovial. If that would have landed, I would have sat here going, this is too dark for me. <laughs> That's too dark. That's me do... saying a lot. <laughs> you were right to go with the, the serious one first. But again, I just would like to point out to people, we are not living in a normal world. If you think that everything's just like it's all, people are insane now. Killing each other on a daily basis over nothing. Uh, treating people horribly, getting people fired because you don't like them, doing this, doing that. We are not living in a normal world right now, and I don't know when the hell it's going to change, but you people are mentally ill. And by you people, I mean Brittany and Rudy. That's who I mean. The masses. Right there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's insane. I can't even, my brain can't even fathom no. that. Because the, here's, here's the kind of neighbors I have. In my life, growing up in my 20s, I wasn't the best neighbor. We may have been no, loud. I lived yeah. in apartment buildings. But there is either we don't talk or we're friends. Right. Like, there doesn't need to be that much in between. Maybe there's a knock on the door saying, hey, bring it down, whatever. But, like, full-on feud with your neighbor to yeah. the point of that, to that extent. You know what's amazing is where I live now, and I've lived there, I think we're, we're in our third year now. Yeah. And if you... As you look at our house, it's right at the end of the cul-de-sac. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Centered you're, in the end of the cul-de-sac. That's exactly like my house. Yeah, that's what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay, so if you look at my house, you go three houses to the right. That would be Carl and his lovely wife Jennifer, who's a great person. Shout out to Carl and Jennifer. Then you move over and you got John <laughs> from St. Louis Park originally. Yeah. Then one more house over is Jim and his sister, nicest people in the world. Then there's my house. Yeah. Then there's Mike and Susan. Just to the left of my house. Then there's John and Amy, two Johns. Oh my God, you know everybody. Then you got Trish and you got Jeff. Why? Why? And then you got Brett, who just. I got like 10 neighbors surrounding yeah. my house, and we get together every Friday and sit in, in lawn chairs and BS. I. It's a ball. I am at a point and very thankful, especially during the pandemic. <clears throat> We love our neighbors. Yeah. I mean, you know I love the Phenomenal. Goldens. I constantly talk about Priscilla, Brian, do, yeah. Josie, well, and McKenna. Well, it's the wrong Golden. It's Richard Golden. That's a great oh, guy, but you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm sure they all know each other. <laughs> sure. The Goldens convention. Is that an anti-Jewish thing you're saying? Is no, that what? You're what? Yes, what? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, but. A muttle. 
but during the pandemic, I mean, we were always all hanging out yeah. in the cul-de-sac. That's how it started. The exactly. Hellers, you know, Don, Bailey, all these, you know, all hanging out in the cul-de-sac. And now what's awesome, even though I love, I love the, I love Carrie and Dave next door, I love them. But everyone has a cabin, except we, you know, my parents have a cabin, but we don't have one. But we hang out in the cul-de-sac like it's our own because everyone leaves. Right. I mean, we treat that oh, yeah. thing like it's yep. our sport court, our tennis court, our basketball <laughs> court. Pickleball. We, oh, yeah, we park in the middle of that. We do, you know, it's like our own private little, you know, Santa asphalt. Question. Out there doing burnouts on a freaking <laughs> yeah. four-wheeler. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah. In the winter, in the middle of the cul-de-sac... Is there a giant mountain of snow? No, we get this mountain in our oh, yard. Oh, you get the mountain they in your yard. They put the mountain in our yard. <laughs> and I'm not mad at it either. It's not like we're frolicking, and it's pretty fun. The kids play on it all the time. Remember I came home in February for about a week? Yeah. I pull up to the house in the taxi, and I went, what the hell? I'm not kidding you. The pile was as high as this ceiling. It's pretty fun. It, mm -hmm. So I'm looking, it's like, how are we going to get around that to get to my driveway? Yeah. But then the next day it was gone. They Whoa. came and hauled it away. Oh, so they, they put it in the middle of the cul-de-sac, and then they come and... And they come and take it. Really? They yeah. did not do that, that for before. us. No. Don't they really? Our, since we are the f like mid-center back, they just push it right onto ours, and it just builds and builds. I yeah. told you not to move into a ghetto, but you wouldn't listen to me. I don't mind it. I don't mind the <laughs> all the things. Ghetto I don't of mind. Eden Prairie? I don't mind, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. All of Eden Prairie. I call it the, I call it the haves and haves more, because yeah, I, yeah, there you go. I look there at, you go. I sit and wash my dishes, and I look. I can see Bear Path across the street. Oh, I love And I'm always path. like, must be nice. And I look around, I'm like, shut up, Brittany. You're yeah. fine. Greg Olson, go and say hello to Greg for me. He's a good buddy of mine. Can you get my husband in there? Yes. Be honest. Oh, yeah, I could easily get him in there. Because every day, we're, we're right up next to the third hole, our fourth hole, and every day he sits and practice putting in our yard and goes, someday, someday. Well, like I said, if he wants to meet Greg, I'll bring him over there. We can have lunch. And he's, like, Justin's normal. Like, I'm eccentric. I get that no, somebody might not want to do 18 holes with me, but you've met Justin. Or one, for that matter. Or one, or one. <laughs> <laughs> but, right. like, he's, like, nice. Just yeah, level. He's very even keel. He's yeah, he so is. even keel. Is, yeah. yeah, Rudy's met him too. Yeah. So we'll take care of that. Not, not about. Well, my. Do you know? You guys know my favorite picture of Greg Olson. <laughs> I don't. It's the Greg Olson who was the catcher for the Atlanta Braves, he's from Minnesota originally. He's a nice Minnesota boy. There is a picture of him, and I cannot remember who the twin is sliding into home. But Greg Olson ends up literally upside down in the air. He hits him so hard sliding in that Greg ends up with his feet straight up, his head straight down, and he's about two feet off the ground. Oh, yeah. That's the first picture that pops Isn't up. is that? You, yeah. <laughs> he is, it looks like he's break dancing. His feet are straight up in it, the it air. It does. And it looks like that's Dan Gladden. <laughs> It Holy is Dan Gladden. Buckets. That's exactly what we, you're absolutely right. It looks, it was Dan looks like Gladden. a yoga move. It looks let me like see, let me see a picture tripod. Well, this is the, um... He's got a big, giant blow up of it. It's phenomenal. Look at that. Is that unbelievable? He looks like he's doing tripod head <laughs> yeah. headstand. Can we put that up on our website or something? Sure, yeah. The Thank look you. on Gladden's face is like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'll post it. Greg, we love you, man. You know that to be true. That must have been a bitch being from oh. Minnesota oh, yeah. to have to play the Twins yep. in the World Series on a different... God, that would hurt, man. I, know. I think about uh, you know the Jones brothers from Apple Valley and... You know, one of them plays for Memphis right now. Oh, yeah. And it must sting a little bit to be. I mean, obviously, yeah. you're living a great life, and you can always come back and sign a day contract with the Timberwolves just to re be able to either retire or say you played for your hometown right, team. Right. Yeah. But that would suck to have to come back for a team. Like, there's a lot of great football players that come out of Minnesota that we don't necessarily hear about, but they do have, you know, five, six, ten-year careers in the NFL, and there was a kid who went to Eden Prairie or he played for Lakeville, and then he plays in the NFL, and then all of a sudden at the end of his career, he's like, I just wanted one season yeah. as a Viking, just yep. one. It's kind of like, remember those monkey paw uh, wishes people would make, and they'd yeah. be like, curse, they'd be like, I want to go to the World Series with the Twins, and, the, and they're like, but you're going to play against yeah. the Twins. Yeah, I want to go to the World Series with the Twins, and then he yeah. wakes up in a Braves <laughs> uniform, he's like, not like this! <laughs> Not like this, you sons of bitches. Yeah, we got to go out there because you would love Greg. Greg's a great guy. Dude, if you can really set this guy. up. Oh, I can get him in there. I will name, no I will, you know Is how we. Is he a criminal? <clears throat> Justin? 
Not that I know of. Okay, well then. But I'll good. double check. Good thing. <laughs> I'll double check. It's a good thing. Um, I got to call him though in front and go. Oh, you know, this might be a little dangerous, but I'm going to bring over and, in, and I'm going to introduce you to this guy. But I know this is America, and he's a white man, so you might hate him. I understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, I saw something this morning. I, I, I got injected here. I'm watching television this morning because I walk in my house. I walk about a mile in my house before I come to work just to get the blood flown and sure. that That's whole deal, so good. right? I do not do that. So I'm watching the news this morning and I'm, there's a bunch of commercials on. It's commercial after commercial after commercial. And all of a sudden I look up and there's a, about a 50 year old white man in a commercial. And I'm like, what the hell? You never see that anymore. A white man in a commercial? Jesus, what? really? Was he the home intruder in an ADT commercial? Because that's oh. all I see these days. Did You're you, close. Did you ever see 30 Rock when they talked about this? <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, I love that you just referenced that. Well, there... that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Because in the commercial, there's one 50-year-old white man. Everybody else is a person of color. There are white women, mm-hmm. but not a lot of white men. Turns out the white man in this commercial is an investment advisor who's screwing people out of oh, money. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> Sneaky. One white guy and he's a thief. <laughs> yep. That's how I feel about you guys, to be to be honest. See, mm-hmm. I'm at the point with that stuff now. I find it hilarious that you're that over the top nuts with your own politics that every white man has to be a thief or a criminal of some sort. I, yes. What is look, Rudy and I don't like our dads either. But yeah. I don't think he's the devil. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's no way my dad can navigate a computer enough to well, steal yeah. people's money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's like when Bitcoin was going around. We were talking about this yesterday with Bitcoin. It's like when my brother was like, well, I made 50K. I'm like, I, I, seriously, man, you can't even navigate a MySpace page. How the hell did you make $50,000 doing Bitcoin? You're a moron. But, yes, you are right that every single uh, commercial nowadays, it's, it's either it's either a white guy is screwing you over yep. or it is a... Uh, it's like a mixed, eight, half Asian, half black man is married to the whitest woman on the planet. Oh, yeah, that's exactly that is, how it that's is. That's every relationship in commercials nowadays. It's like, can't you just sell me Tide? How about just tell me how good your product is? Love Tide. Yes. That big uh, orange bottle sure. or whatever color that is. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It might be red, I guess. But no, honestly, God, and the great thing about it is the last time you see this honky's face in this commercial He's got this sneer on his yeah. face. Yeah, <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank. Evil white men. Yeah. Good guy. You know, let me tell you something there, whatever shithole you're running over there. I have a son, and my son is a white man, so back the F off before somebody kicks you in the nuts. How about also, that? Also a criminal. Oh, yeah, Andy. Criminal Andy, mastermind. Yeah. Notorious criminal. Actually, though, out of everybody in these, thank you, I knew you were going to say that, out of these two shows, what? he's the only one, if he had malintent, could actually yeah. uh, oh, be smart enough. Oh, that would not be good. No, just be smart enough to, like, know how to run, like, a Bitcoin thing. Uh, yeah. Scam. Scam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I would have to say we should almost be careful because if something ever came up, we're going to know it's him because we're all dummies. I had a friend. I won't say his name, even though I, don't, I haven't seen him in years now, but he came out to our house, and Andy was sitting in the back of the house at a table, and I don't know if he was studying or what he was doing, but uh, this, my friend said, I'm going to go over and talk to Andy. I said, I don't need, Why? He goes, I just want to, you know, try to make friends with him and get to know him. I said, he likes to be by himself pretty much. And I, but if you want, that's your business, right? Mm-hmm. So he goes over there and he starts talking to Andy. And of course, once he starts talking, he never shuts up. Mm-hmm. So he's talking and talking and talking to Andy, right? This. Andy does not even look up after about a five minute little soliloquy from this guy. Andy doesn't even look up and he goes, I have no interest at all in that or you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Andy kind of reminds me of that. I'm, I'm looking at a picture of him. He kind of reminds me of Gru from Despicable Me. Mm. I could see that. Yeah, he's got the bald Pers- head. Yeah. He's got a little bit of a pointier nose. He's a yep. you know, nice guy. You know, Gru, I think, you know, deep down had like a good <laughs> yeah. intentions. Andy has all that. Absolutely. And Andy does not suffer fools, like you said. Oh, no, no. no, 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 no. Even when I'm being a little bit weird, he's like, I'm good, thanks. You know, and like me and Andy get along great. Yeah, you do. But. And and I there's many people in my life that are like that who are very good like he's got great boundaries and there's like right. yeah I have no interest in that and I don't it's like <laughs> all right I and I love directness like I do too I, I absolutely um, do don't lie to me tell me the truth if if I'm going on and on about something he go he'll go okay <laughs> wrap go, it up. Mm-hmm. 
I love it. All right, we do have to take a break. Look at this. I'm taking a break right on time. What the hell's the matter with me? Impressive. Whoa. How the how the hell did that happen? You know what I mean? Yeah. Hi, this is Tom, a white man in America today, trying to screw you out of your money. Stop. What? <laughs> I wanted to make sure everybody is on the up and up with everybody over here. Rudy and I are going to try to steal from everyone, and you as a white woman are going to run the world. Okay. So you're good to go. Go on with the com or the ad, sir. Well, you said a c c c c c commercial. No, you can't say commercial. <laughs> that sound. It just felt like that felt a little just not professional. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we'll do this then. Thank you very much. Thank you for your understanding. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell and My Pillow are launching the My Pillow 2.0. When Mike invented My Pillow, it had everything you could ever want in a pillow. Now, nearly 20 years later, he discovered a new technology that makes My Pillow even better. The My Pillow 2.0 has a patented adjustable fill of the original My Pillow, and now with a brand new fabric that is made with a temperature regulating thread. The My Pillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow that you will ever own. Say goodbye to tossing and turning and flipping your pillow over in the middle of the night. And more great news on the MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free offer with promo code TOM. MyPillow 2.0, with its temperature-regulating technology, is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square to receive the MyPillow 2.0. Buy one, get one free offer. Just when you thought the MyPillow couldn't get any better, MyPillow 2.0 gives you the best pillow ever. Enter promo code TOM or call 800-516-5146 to get your MyPillow 2.0s now. When you need someone to listen, a lawyer you know and trust. If you've never been in an auto accident, it's hard to know what to expect from the insurance adjuster. Here are some tips. One, if they talk to you about whether or not you should hire a lawyer, it's a good sign that you probably should. Two, it's illegal for them to give you any legal advice. They aren't lawyers and they aren't licensed to practice law. Three, if they tell you that everyone involved in the accident is at fault, they're wrong. This comes from the belief that you're at fault for just being on the road. That's nonsense and not supported by any law. Finally, remember that friendly adjusters are often just gaining information. They want you to do most of the talking so they can file their report. I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. I hope you're never injured in a collision. But if you are, don't sign anything until you've talked to us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and There's a guy named Tom Cross who likes to do kite things. Tom takes the phrase, go fly a kite to an extreme, and for years goes all over the country in search of great kite flying events. Lincoln City, Oregon comes to mind with Chinook winds and seven miles of pristine beach that draws folks from all over North America for the best kite flying conditions in the world. Tom brings a little Minnesota with him when he goes to Lincoln City in his new Forest River RV Rockwood Rue, 19 expandable trailer, of course, that he hauls from Niemeyer trailer sales in Albertville and Elko Newmarket, Minnesota. Niemeyer Trailer Sales is the only place Tom would prepare his next kite flight. Solar panels, full bath, exterior griddle, double door refrigerator, queen beds, and sleeps six every night in the RV Rockwood from the place that is your family-owned guide to RV trailers and truck accessories since 1965. This is Tom. Visit my friends at Niemeyer Trailer Sales and take your passion on the road. Niemeyer Trailer Sales. Go to N-I-E-M-E-Y-E-R-S dot com Niemeyer trailer saying we are back ladies and gentlemen a little news a little information uh Rudy we got to run a test on you because uh Brittany and I worked this whole deal out and see if you can guess what this stands for okay uh because we couldn't guess and then the Brittany looked it up I made a guess but I was wrong <laughs> yeah very it's, wrong you know it was very wrong exactly Susan Boyle makes triumphant return to BGT after stroke oh BGT yeah what is that Britain's got talent Dang! He knew it. How'd you know that? Susan Boyle. Uh, I, yeah, for what for whatever reason, I've done research on um, Susan Boyle. That was really? impressive. Yeah. You've been dating her a little bit on the side. Hey, there you yeah. go. You know. <gasps> so Brittany knew it, looked it up. Yeah. Because I thought it stood for big giant titty. Yeah. <laughs> it Which, does stand for that too. It's that well, too. yeah. It is Susan okay. Boyle again. Yes, it is. She returned to her own big giant titties. Yes. Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what she returned? It's like returned home. to BGT. Yeah. It's like it's like well, a Milo Milo's journey home. Yes. Coming back to BGT, big giant titties. Absolutely. No, she was a good singer. If I remember, wasn't she on America's Got Talent? Too? Yes, she yeah. was. Okay, mm -hmm. but she was a good singer, if I remember correctly. I'm amazing singer. Yeah. Yep. Amazing. I do remember that. So God bless her. A stroke, man. I have a friend now. He's 
well, I, he's just a friend. I've got to leave it as a friend. He has had eight strokes in the last, like, four years. Oh, man. What, what triggers those? Well, it's uh, embolism. It's, or it's blood clot in the brain. Clot, blood yeah. clot in the brain. So it's, it can come from, like, ten different things. Don Shelby went into detail yeah. about his yeah. uh, when he was on with us um, and his strokes. We got to get him back on the show. We haven't had Don on in a while. We I him love on. Don Shelby. Shelby's a great guy. I love him. They're great also guy. saying that's the problem with Jamie Foxx right now. Oh, yeah. Because he, St- he go blind and they, for a while. They think it's, it, yeah. So, like, this is a, if I was listening to, uh, I can't remember, some doctor on a podcast, and he was saying, they were talking about Jamie Foxx, and he said, if there's a stroke that is also with blindness, that it's going to be a long haul for him. He's probably really? never, they said, you know, this doctor's prediction was Jamie will probably never play a piano ever again. Oh, Jesus. Which is, he might be the most talented man on the planet. A very talented guy, there's no doubt about that. I've never seen him in a bad movie. Okay, let me rephrase that. I've, okay, there's a couple of bad movies. Are there a couple but of there's, bad ones? But I mean, when, <laughs> when he played Ray Charles, oh, oh yeah. my. Yep. yep. Huh. I got to do this. You give your hand to me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that microphone ever stayed with Ray. No, you're right, yeah. Swayed from so I loved Ray Charles as a kid. But I remember one time, and Rudy, you, you might love this. My dad came over, and I was 16, and I hadn't seen him in a few years. Mm-hmm. But he, he just stopped in. All of a sudden, he stops by the house, right? So I see my, my father sitting out in the living room. And I put on Ray Charles, Born to Lose, and my dad got up and left. Uh. <laughs> Apparently, he took it personally. Not a fan? Well, I meant it to be, I meant it to be personal, sure. so he took it the right way, yeah, so yeah. that's good. Born to Lose, <laughs> I've lived my life in pain. God, I loved Ray Charles. Now I'll be thinking about Ray Charles all day. Mm-hmm. I love that man so much. Do you know that he had a rig in his backyard that is, uh, there was like a center pole and a rod, and they would ho- hook up a, a motorcycle to it, and he'd ride a motorcycle. No way, really? Yeah, he didn't would ride a motorcycle that. for like a couple of hours. Just huh. loved the feel of it? Yeah, because he didn't know he wasn't going anywhere. He just knew he was still moving. That's all that mattered yeah. to him, because he's blind. Wow. I mean, it's probably important that he knows he's not going anywhere, because the probably. element of fear <laughs> <laughs> would take over <laughs> the good. enjoyment. But you know how wonderful that is? Whoever came up with that idea for Ray Charles, maybe he came up with it, but he, gets, he got to feel what it was like to ride a motorcycle, even though he was blind. Okay, so my grandpa. That's cool. My, mm-hmm. my grandpa was like 80% blind. He had barely any vision. And he liked driving um, a lot. Uh-oh. And so they ended up, they had lived in town in Williston, and they ended up moving to the farm because he wanted to be near the farm. And we would, it was about, gosh, maybe... Maybe like uh, not even a quarter mile. It was a very small drive from the mm-hmm. house to the farm, and sure. it was all their land. Mm-hmm. We'd all pile in Grandpa's car, and Uh-oh. he would drive us. To... Nothing Uh-oh. bad happened, but it's just wild because we could walk, but he just loved the idea of still driving. Sure. And it was slow. There was nothing in the way. But I still laugh that we all, would, you know, all of us grandkids would pile in Grandpa's car, and he would make that tiny little drive just for the sake of driving. And, uh, yeah. Well, I will tell you, remember about a month ago, I went out and did that appearance. I uh, did a little speech at a, at a gathering of people. Yeah. Lake was Bill, or there. was... It was in Anoka, Anoka, actually. It was at the Greenhaven Golf Course, which I love anyway. There was a man there, could not find a nicer guy in the world, 102 years old. He's 102, and I'm talking to him, just a great guy, all the rest of it. Hey, Tom, I tell you, I'd like to talk more, but I got to get going. Pulls the car keys out of his pocket, went and drove home at 102 <laughs> years old. Get some. God, the guy was killing it, though. <laughs> really? I shouldn't say I killing mean, it. That's not a good use. Yeah, yeah, right, wait, right. Legally, here. he was not. He yeah. was not killing anyone. He was just, he had it dialed in. He was 102 and had great vision, can drive the greatest. How about that action? I just don't. I'm. I, we were just talking about this today because Kinley got congratulations, Kinley. She got her permit. She passed yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rudy's daughter, and so we were talking about this. I I loved well, when I used to nanny, and the uh, teenage kiddos would get their license because I'm not a big driver. I don't not. I don't want to drive. See, I don't care about it either. Yeah, one way or the other. And so when I finally. I don't want to drive at 102. I don't want to drive at 40. Mm-hmm. I just wish there was yeah. a way I could get away with never. Like, I don't want to. Get a chauffeur. 
I'm working on it. A little limo and a chauffeur pull up in front of the place every day. I'll present it like Shark Tank. Honey, I think this would be a great idea yeah, exactly. for 100% <laughs> investment. Should I, you know, um, but Rudy loves to drive. Yeah, big fan. So people, what? Are, like, you, are you a big fan of driving? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you think you're going to have trouble when she gets her license and if it's like who's going to drive the car? Oh, she can. Yeah. She can. Yeah, because, you know, yep. why not? Absolutely. Yep. Plus, you know, I'm. I'm Kind of like to go to a brewery every once in a while. I'm like, hey, would you, <laughs> you drive? Yeah, Absolutely. Why don't you come on down. We'll play a little Jenga. I'll have two drinks, and then you can drive us home. Yeah. And did you drive with her yesterday then too? I didn't drive with her yesterday. I've driven with her before, like northern Minnesota backwoods, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but yeah, no. She went out. She took my mom's car around the neighborhood in uh, Apple Valley for a while. So she's not quite. You know, she's a little scared about going on actual streets. So yeah, we yeah, just yeah. kind of did like the the side streets, but. Yeah, eventually she'll have to, you know, hit that. Here's the thing, though. I said, number one, after I'd like to take you out early in the morning before anybody else gets on the highway, like around, you know, 6, 30, 7 a.m. on a Sunday. Yeah. And teach you how to properly merge onto a highway and to do the roundabout. Yeah. Because I don't think there's enough people that know how to properly merge onto a highway. Oh, you got that right. And does your car have... Well, I know you're getting a new one here soon. Yeah. But you got to teach her where it doesn't give you the alert of being in the blind spot. That's why my nanny family, they were like, you're taking Britney's car because out of all of them, I had the worst car. Sure. Because that assist that tells you that there's somebody in the blind spot, yeah. they don't, they don't, they kind of lose that habit of looking because yeah. they you oh, know, rely sure. on that. Sure. And then the backup cam, mm -hmm. not looking totally behind you. I love backup cams. I know I do too. Oh, plenty good. Mm -hmm. I like my big joke. So I've taught three kiddos to drive uh, was, oh, it's not live. <laughs> they look at the, they go, what? What? Oh, that's not live. And there's always like a moment of panic. Oh, that's great. I know, isn't yeah. that funny? That's a great joke. And there's another guy from town. He's a comedian. He goes, oh, man, the other day I took a dick pic. It's really weird. I used the backup camera on my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus. That's, oh, God, I don't want to even picture that. Oh, that's funny. Oh. Well, with those views too, man. They have of cars like the. I'm sure you're sure your new car is like this. Where it out, it looks like a drone above it. We yeah. You can see everything around it. Oh yeah. That's wild to me. I'll never think that's normal. And we have a car that does that, and I, I'll never think that's Isn't normal. Isn't that too distracting? I just think, wow, how is this thing? How is this possible? Yeah. Well, I suppose. Yeah, that when you have a trailer and it shows like the trailer is kind of translucent and yeah. it shows you what is on the how? backs. How, how is that possible? I know it it's is. Guessing. Yeah. <laughs> it's guessing. It's just making assumptions. You're like, this is Sesame Street in the trailer. What is? It? Why is this? This isn't the right road. Strange. Little stick people. <laughs> it all works out beautifully. Do you ever work with Louis C.K.? Uh, I've never worked with Louis C.K., but there are definitely some people that I've worked with that I've worked with that have worked with Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. and have. Stories. Now there's a new one. Showtime drops Louis C.K. documentary. Wow. This boy's never coming back, is he? Yeah. I mean, he's never going to be as big as he was. Uh, you know, I mean, he sold out Madison Square Garden three uh, nights in a row, like three really? months ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People. And here's the thing. Like, I, I know it's terrible. And I have a different take on it uh, with Louis C.K. What he did was awful. And he used his power and, and yes. to be able to. Yep. It's, it's awful what he did. After I heard that story, though, because Sarah Silverman came out and said, you know, Louis C.K., you sort of it, comics are different with one another. Like we yeah, give each yep. other a lot of free passes. Yep. And that was kind of Louis thing. So even when he was friends with Sarah, he would go to her apartment beforehand just to like sit and write and hang out. And they would be talking about shows. And then before they would go out and do sets, he would say, hey, do you mind if I, you know, whip it out real quick? And she's like, oh, yeah, fine, whatever. She'd sit on the couch. She'd sit on her phone. He'd do his thing. And then he'd clean up and she'd be like, good. Are you ready to go? And he'd be like, yep. He's like, all right, fine. She was his friend and knew that that was his thing, and she allowed that to happen. And after I read that, I was like, I got to get better friends. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I was like, none I, of my friends would ever let me. None of my friends, they don't give me a ride to the airport, let, me, <laughs> let alone have me do that. Uh, but it was awful for a while. And when guys like Louis Lee from Acme say, listen, he's a good guy. He, he, obviously, he's made some mistakes, but who amongst us hasn't? And you start to kind of see some of the stories like, I don't know. I, I got a different version of it, but I'm glad to see that he's a, 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 a has learned from his mistakes and he's starting to mount to come back. And I imagine they did they give a reason why they dropped the documentary. Is it a uh, like a they uh. dropped it because they think he is 
some of the stories weren't true in this documentary, or were they like, yeah, we actually don't want to promote this guy at all? What Does it show him in a good light? It says Showtime Drops Louis C.K. Documentary Project would have looked at comedians' downfall and comeback. Well, he hadn't made a comeback yet, I, kind of, I suppose, what you were telling me. Yeah, we don't see him in the mainstream anymore. No. But, I mean, when he announced that he was back at Acme, uh, was this like two years ago? Yeah. I think it was a little longer than that. Oh, maybe really? about two or three. Yeah, it was really? a little bit longer than that. But when he announced it, they announced five shows and they sold out that day within yeah. an hour. Every single show was sold out. Because yeah, I was at the queue when they announced that, I remember. Oh, there, right? Yeah. Um, I think there's a very interesting dynamic of things you can do when you're coming up in the world and things you have to acknowledge that is a little, like, there's a upper hand, for lack of a better word, that you have in dynamic that when you are on top of the world. Sure. And I don't mean this to condemn him. I actually think it's a very interesting thing that you could almost study, right? Like if I was a lonely intern and I'm asking girls, hey, can I masturbate in front of you? It's like, well, that's that's your, I don't want to say courting, but there you could that, that could work. But once you're a top comedian and you're asking other lower end comedians and you know that word of mouth, I mean, especially in the comedian world, if being somebody who is accommodating, I mean, Rudy, you do this on the level of technology. You pretty much let men masturbate with you by giving them videos. Same thing. Sure. Yeah. Where are we headed? <laughs> I'm just saying that. What the hell? What? Because you have to come from a world of, yes, awesome, you know, when you're a comedian coming up in the world, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. you have to be. So if you're a female comedian who's on the lower side and Louis C.K. is like, can I masturbate in front of you? It's a different dynamic yeah. than when you're on the lower side of the totem pole. It just is. And I'm not saying that he's evil or he's the worst person in the world. I just think you have to realize your privilege and the dynamics. It's yeah. almost like Sarah Silverman's the only one who's on equal footing that he can ask to do that when he was on the top of his game. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand what it is about that that excites him so much. I don't what know. What is it? I mean, I like being with a woman. I don't want to just look at her and whack a mole. I, what's that? I mean, God bless you. That's what you like. Good for you. It's not even that big of a kink, though. Like, No, it's not. To whip no. out your schwanz in front of women? No, I mean, if as long as consensually, right? Well, but it wasn't yeah. most of the time. Well, that's the thing is it's such a blurry line of consensual when yeah, it comes to true. having the, again, I can't, upper hand, or having the dynamics of, uh, you know, I don't want to say boss because it's almost bigger than just boss because it's like this guy, he could ask me to open for him mm -hmm. or he might not if I say no. And and he might not even realize those dynamics, but I'm a thousand percent sure that the women that he did this in front of were thinking of those dynamics when they were like, okay. Yeah, absolutely. However, if this was... 15 years ago, and Joan Rivers, I'm in a green room with her, and she goes, you mind if I Netflix and chill in front of you? I'd be like, go for it, girl. You do yeah, it. You I, go. I got the story in my back pocket. This will live rent-free in my brain for the rest of my life, yeah. Joan. You feel, go right I ahead. Loved yeah. <laughs> I loved great. her. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. She was wonderful. Yeah. Also, I would also let Joan yeah. masturbate in front of me. I would not. I'm sorry. I don't want to watch well, anybody no. masturbate. You've got good, no, thanks. You've got a good moral compass. Me yeah. and Rudy, yeah. it's blurry at best. <laughs> and my husband would be like, what? I'd be like, yeah, that happened. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Showtime has dropped plans for a documentary on Louis C.K.'s downfall and comeback, reports the Los Angeles Times. The project was announced by Paramount. You notice how I say Paramount now? Because I always thought it was Paramount, but it's Paramount. Oh. Huh? What mm -hmm. do you think of that? Paramount Plus, baby. Paramount Plus, yeah. Global exec David Nevins uh, last summer, but he stepped down amid restructuring months later. Variety reports when he announced the documentary, Nevins said there had been a bit of a backlash against hashtag Me Too, who has to go away and who's allowed to come back. He said Louis C.K.'s situation was slightly different of that uh, than that of... Well, Harvey Weinstein actually raped women, didn't he? Yeah. And yeah. That's, well, I, that's quite a difference. I don't love when they put people in the same buckets like that. Yeah, I think yeah. we can make enough buckets to divide people up. Don't put that. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Louis C.K.'s career took a big hit in, 19, uh, excuse me, in 2017 after five women accused him of sexual misconduct and allegations that he admitted were true. But he returned with new material in 2018 and won a Grammy last year, prompting some people to quip so much for the cancel culture. Nevin said last year that the documentary would take a wider look at hashtag Me Too and would involve the New York Times journalists who uncovered the Louis C.K. allegations. So, yeah, I, I don't know what he's up to. But, you know, one thing that we can point out is that, you know, you, you really like 
uh, Louis C.K. used to, I think you like Louis C.K. too. One of the most arrogant pricks I've ever met in my life. Yeah. Yeah, so it people, all depends. Yeah, people have, uh, that I know that have, I've worked with that have worked with him have said he's very standoffish. Yeah, he's, he's kind very, of, yeah, yeah he he's kind of just like, you know, you, you go into the green room, you're like, hey, Louie, how's it going? And he just kind of looks at his computer. Yep. I, I also think that there's a lot of pressure on him, too, especially at that time. Maybe not so much now, but at that time he had uh, Life with Louie. He had the, the FX show On the Horizon. He had huge specials. Mm -hmm. It was still probably trying to hide some of these allegations that were going down. Yeah, so he probably. was probably in a different headspace. But I don't know. Plus, he, we also have to kind of remember, hey, man, like sometimes these I know they do terrible things, but he's also has children. You know, he also has babies at home, and he's got a family and people around him. He's going to be fine. If you're worried yeah. about his paycheck, paycheck he's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm saying what's going to kill him is he was on top. And he got, he obviously, there's the attention aspect, there's the fame aspect. That's the part he's missing. Financially, he's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he will be. What was that first TV show? The first TV show he had was terrible. You're talking about the HBO Life with Louis. Oh, was it Life with Louis? Louis? Isn't it just. Well, it, it was Louis, but that was on FX. Yeah. And that, that was his second show, which I thought was brilliant. Very okay. funny. Very funny. But he did Life with Louis, which was kind of like a sitcom. And yeah. His it's not wife, funny in the least. His wife on that show was Pam Adlon. And I don't know I, who that is. She's the voice of Bobby Hill. If you saw her face, you'd go, oh, I know Pam I Adlon. She, Who's Bobby Hill? From King of the Hill. I know exactly. Oh, oh, yeah. that, that old the cartoon. The cartoon, yeah. Okay. yeah. But yeah. Pam Adlon is just a man. She is oh, super funny and brilliant. She's and got a really raspy voice. Super you've raspy voice, her. yeah. You've seen her in stuff for mm. sure. I don't recognize her, but she looks like she looks like, like all Italian women. <laughs> She kind of has a Janine Garofalo look to yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. I mm -hmm. can see that. Find yeah. a better photo. Look, I mean, I, I don't tell people, you know, don't tell me and I won't tell you what's funny and what isn't because there are situations where, you know, somebody thinks it's funny. I don't. I think it's funny. They don't. That's fine. Yeah, that, I got no problem sure. with that. You know, we don't have to agree on what's funny and what isn't. I just, he was in studio a couple of times at the Q uh, in, in the old days and he was not friendly. I mean, he was beyond just you know, keeping to himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was an arrogant prick. There's no question about that. So do, I don't know what that's all about. Do you think, and you guys really try to think and be very honest, do you think we allow men to be more standoffish before we make that, like, that per we, we make excuses and whatever for them? Or is it the fact that do we make excuses for people that are massively talented when they're assholes? Yeah, both probably. I think both. Because yeah. it's funny, it's like, I, there's a lot of men in my life who, you know, would sit quietly or whatever, or like, um, you know, be standoffish. But I, when it happens with women, I don't know why. I think we expect them to be warmer. And it's funny because even us talking, but also on top of that, I think when somebody is massively talented, uh, man or woman, we allow them, there's a buffer for like, for being an asshole for sure, where we go, I allow, I allow some. Really? Do you? Because I can't do that. If you're an asshole, you're an asshole. I can't, I can't deal with that. I mean, asshole, but, like, I don't even know if we can clear, like, we have to clarify, like, maybe just standoffish that we put Well, no, I understand standoffish. Some people are shy. I got yeah. no problem with that. I, I was going to say shy. That's, that's yeah. usually, yeah, because I remember we did a meet and greet with the guys from Metallica one time, mm -hmm. and Kirk Hammett from Metallica, great guitar player, right. was there and didn't really talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember just thinking, like, this guy, guy's kind of a dick. And then we, when we walked listeners out, some guy was like, dude, what's up with Kirk Hammett? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, man, what a prick, huh? And I'm like, yeah. Well, I walked back in the room. And Kirk was like ex explaining to like his handlers. He was like, "I am so sorry. He's like, I just don't know what to say sometimes." He's yeah. like, it's, "It feels. Yep. We I, I don't feel like I'm a celebrity. And I, I know it looks like I'm a jerk, but I'm not." And then it made me go, "Oh, the next time somebody is silent, it's not them being. A, yeah. ma maybe I'll give them a little bit more leeway of maybe their shyness is overtaking them." Yeah, I, I like just uh, I released a question on the internet, and they said. If we're gonna, I said, if we're gonna have a, a really huge prick on the show, who should it be? And they all voted for Kristen Burt. Yeah. So, uh, and there she is, <laughs> out of the blue. <laughs> I've been screaming at my computer <laughs> screen. <laughs> okay, start Going, screaming now. Let me see, okay, but 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 but. Um, I want to hear so all you about guys it. No, they are shopping that documentary elsewhere. So even though it won't be shown on Showtime, it could turn up on another network. Oh, oh, what happened? Hang on what a the hell just happened? Hang on, hang on. I'll let her back in. Uh, there oh. we go. Now we got you. Weird. All right, so Brittany, what'd you do? 
I didn't do anything. You're a disaster. I didn't click anything. There you, you go. You're even a bigger I disaster. I just could let her back in. I no, don't know why she got kicked out. Kristen, she did it <laughs> well, on purpose. Well, it's because I started talking about Louis C.K. Ah. And they were like, out of the company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just as I was saying, it could turn up at another network. They are shopping it elsewhere. So it's not going to be on Showtime, but it could show up somewhere else. Where's Showtime now? That's at Paramount now? Yes, yeah, that I is so, yeah. Paramount. So, yes. or, or officially, I think as of June twenty seventh. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So everything's merging. But um, and the Louis C.K. thing, I was going to say, I think most people would allow Joan Rivers to do whatever she wants because mm -hmm. it's also a power thing. Like, if Joan Rivers is like doing her stuff in front of me, I'm not feeling threatened. I think I would feel threatened with Louis C.K. doing it in front of me as sure. a woman. Sure, I could see that. Yeah. Is that because you don't have a penis? Uh, it's also because he's bigger and stronger than me. I don't think he is. Oh, yeah. He's a big guy. I'm Louis C.K. is a remember. big guy? What? I'm 5'3". Yeah, he's I'm not. Five, three. He's, like, got huge shoulders, right? Louis C.K.? I don't remember him being big at all. I think he's, like, around 5'10", isn't he? Six uh, foot. Six foot? Yeah, no, that's... he is not six feet tall. There's no way he's six feet tall. He doesn't seem like a small person. No, because he's not a big guy. Because I've seen him on Rogan, and they take pictures together. And Rogan's a little bit taller than me, and Louis C.K.'s got him by at least four to five inches. So that makes about that makes sense. Rogan's a little meatball. Yeah, that's a very good a definition meatball. of Joe Rogan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so how he's tall is he? He's I think he's a little bit taller than me, so I think he's about five seven, maybe five seven and a half. Because I'm five five and a half. Mm-hmm. It says 5'8", but... 5'8", yeah. Well, they, I mean, I don't know. Chris Eggert's kid is also... They mark him at 6'8 on the roster, but I, I think know. he's more like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, I'm like 6'10". I know that. Yeah. I'm 5'3", people, so... <laughs> it's a mountain of muscle. People. The only thing I'm yes. doing is kicking Louis C.K. in the shins. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of interesting, because when you spend your whole life, now 52 years of my life being around famous people, because they would come in to be interviewed and all that stuff, you get a different take on everybody because you've been around so many really famous people and good people and bad. It's just part of your life, you know? So when somebody, he was very standoffish and not friendly at all. And then he just kind of got up in the middle. I, I got to go. Just right in the middle of the interview. It's like, okay, whatever. Yeah. I he's just, never going to be in that like elite no. Hollywood circle anymore. No. Like he, that that is done once everything came to light and even though he's apologetic and again as Brittany said he's fine he's fine financially his fans are going to show up they're going to buy tickets mm -hmm. he's going to live a very comfy life but if if he was looking for that adulation the way he had it say 10 years ago that doesn't happen anymore i want to ask you a question because you live in hollywood you've been in a business for a long time i have always noticed again over the 52 years that I, well, i've been interviewing people for about 40 years i guess 42 something like that but the huge stars are the ones who are really nice people. Isn't that so amazing? So nice. And I, it amazing. takes something really special to be, and I know this is going to sound like crazy, but it takes something really special to be that like A, A plus list type of celebrity. Right. Um, besides having that like charisma, that it factor, like they have like an aura when they walk down like the red carpet. You know, yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you turn true. heads when they, when they show up, but they're incredibly kind. They make you feel like you're the only person in the room. The George Clooney's, the Hugh Jackmans, Catherine Zeta Jones, and Michael Douglas like glide down the red carpet yeah. and like grace you with their majesty. But you don't feel <laughs> like, like you don't feel like you're the you know you're their servant you feel like they are so happy to see you and they can't wait to give you a sound bite mm -hmm. um that is something that's really hard to do and then there's a reason certain people stay sort of in that like b plus a minus they can't make it to that next level because they don't have that that je ne sais quoi that that certain people have right i mean it's you go down the list of the huge I mean, I always throw out Jane Fonda was very pleasant in person, although you can look in her eyes and be sad because she's got that edge. You can look and see the edge to her of sadness. There's no question. She's had a lot of trauma. A lot of trauma in her a life. A lot of trauma. If you've watched her documentary on HBO, it's you know, fascinating. Peter Falk was another one. Carol Burnett was another one. You can go down the list. The huge, huge stars are generally very nice people because they don't have to put anything on, you know? Nope. It's like, I'm already a big star. I don't have to impress anybody, so I'll just be nice to you. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep's another one. That's like, what I heard. You yeah. literally feel like you could go and knock back like six cocktails with 
Meryl and be dancing on the bar with her at the end of the night. That's how she makes you feel. Like, That's yeah, just one of the girls. It's great. That's great to hear. No question. But well, again, I, I never met him in person. I talked to him a million times. But before he died, Gore Vidal and I were friends and we talked on the phone all the time. But I never met him in person. Isn't that weird? I haven't met you in person. So. Well, that's true. That's a very good point. You and I have never met in person. That's. A, I'm glad you threw that out there. You both are going to just be wildly disappointed. It's going to be, oh, Jesus, that's it, huh? That's everything? Well, 11 years for this. Yeah. 11 years and he's wearing like a black sweatshirt. Yeah. What the hell is that? He could have stepped yeah. it up. I think you both are going to just go, no could thanks. Could be bad. Yeah, can't believe they buried him in that sweatshirt. That's so weird. I'm gonna do some of my hands. <laughs> it's gonna be like you really are short. Like that's it. Yeah, there you go. I'm there you have. Swaddle you up, Kristen. <laughs> swaddle me up in a little blanket, mm -hmm. little little burrito. Yep. <laughs> um, oh no, you are. Uh, and she, by the way, when she's doing that, she's literally wrapping herself up with her sweater. Mm -hmm. Little sweater. You're a it's disaster. cold here in LA. We're having oh, June it? gloom. Really. Yeah, honestly, after this endless winter where we had so much rain, we had May gray and June gloom, which are typical things for us in the spring, but it is extraordinarily gloomy, or I guess gloomier than it normally is, and it's like become a big joke that we've had winter since November. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's it, in I 50s suppose and 60s. It's not warm. So, uh, you know, I got to ask you a question. And I, like I said, I got to make very clear to people now that I don't have a political stance on anything. The one political stance I do have is I've looked at every person running for president and I can't stand any of them. So I got a problem. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel that way, unless right. you're yeah, like a hardcore like member of either party. Right, right. That's the only way. But what the hell did, was your governor talking about? He went after the Senate. What did he call him? A, a little rat or what did he call him? I don't even know, but he was going after him, obviously, oh, because he sent two um, airplane, I th like he flew to um, groups of immigrants who obviously were undocumented um, to California, to Sacramento, which is our state capital, in case right. anyone thought Los right. Angeles was our state capital. Um, and, <laughs> but I think that? we picked him up in Texas. I don't even think they came from Florida. They didn't. Um, and, and sent him our way. Um, and I think, you know, that is distinct. It's political theater. It's political theater on it both is, ends. Yep. Political theater from DeSantis to spend the money and do that. And it's political theater for uh, then Newsom to then go and make this big stance on it. Um, obviously, they will be taken care of here in California. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, the two of them have been fighting. This, uh, Newsom has taken out billboards in Florida. Oh, He's not running for president. Really? No. And it's. Why are you spending that money to do it? It's fine that you don't like DeSantis. Um, it's fine if you don't like Newsom. But like, if you're yeah. buying into this political theater, it's nonsense. That's all BS. It's all to get attention and all the rest of it. And like I said, I cannot, I can't pick out one person from that group, Democrat, Republican, whatever. I don't like any of these people. <laughs> I, just I know like, you look at who's running for president. You're like, just, and everyone's throwing their hat, of course, in the, for the GOP nomination. But it's just like, this is the best our country has to I offer. I know. <laughs> I, it's exactly how I feel. This is what we get. That's it from both parties. Really? Uh, that's so, it. That's it. Welcome. But I mean, think about it. Like, who wants to get into politics? Like, Not me. my uncle always says, you love to debate. Why don't you get into politics? And I, I always think I can't think of a worse career to go into right now. <laughs> right, it would exactly. age me 100 years. Exactly. So why don't we all just, you know, have a good time. We'll try to get have a few laughs and we'll move on with our life. What do you think? Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, I, I want to throw out just yesterday, because I know that we've talked about this before, um, and, and this is sports. This is usually Bob's area. Fanny. but it, it, Yes, it, but we're crossing over a little bit into the entertainment category. Um, if anyone saw the news yesterday that the PGA merged with Live Golf. Right, right. Um, and all the controversy, because Live Golf is backed by Saudi Arabia. I highly recommend everyone go and watch Netflix Full Swing if you haven't done so. Right, right. Because they cover... Um, the formation of Live Golf in that documentary. And it is fascinating because you see the reaction with Tiger Woods and Rory uh, Ma Ma McElroy, I think is that his name? McElroy, yeah, thank yep. you. McElroy yep. okay. Um, and how they were um, organizing the golfers 
um, against Live Golf, and then you see the other ones yep. that were going in for the big signing bonuses. Yep. And now to see them merge and to see the reactions, because it's mixed reaction as as well. Um, but it does feel, after watching the documentary, that the PGA really kind of caved to this situation because yep. they knew they couldn't compete with the money. Um, and it's a really well done uh, docu series. I'm going to say it's about eight episodes, and they do have a season two coming. And I'm hoping that that plays out. I hope the cameras were up and running yesterday because this is going to be some serious golf drama. I am looking at the screen where all four of us are pictured, and I'm trying to picture you and Brittany wearing burkas. What do you think? I've worn one. You've worn a burka? Yeah. Oh, I suppose you had to. When I was in, yeah. That's true. You when had I, to. Well, just when we were touring, uh, so yep. when I was overseas, when we would go anywhere in the country. So right, I did one... Right like outing in Kuwait and um, we didn't necessarily, we went through a mosque and that's when we had to put one on. We didn't have to do in Kuwait proper. We didn't have to wear one oh, Okay. at the yacht mall. Um, the yacht mall. But <laughs> when we went Which in a mosque. Which one did you buy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, the, it's not selling yachts. You can only get there through yacht. Oh, I it's see. It's normal yeah. stores. Oh, and by normal stores, I mean very crazy stores. Oh my but God. yeah. Yeah. Um, we, uh, yeah, when we went to a mosque, we had to wear one, so. Yeah, well, that's just respect. I totally. I have no problem with that at all. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, the material they make it out of is so breathable. It's not so bad. And oh, when, really? with that sun beating down, it's not so bad. Um, it just, uh, and again, we were walking through it, so it was a very short time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. It was very interesting. Yeah, cultural respect. I mean, it's like going to the Vatican. You can't have, like, your shoulders exposed right. or, no, you really? know. I've never yeah. been to the Vatican. I've never been oh. to South Italy. I've been to Northern Italy, but never Southern. It's time to go. It is time to I should get to Rome one of these days. I really should. Gotta get to but the Vatican. Northern Italy is so nice right there on the border of Switzerland. Oh, my God, that's beautiful up there. I just want to eat my way through the country. Well, yes, I understand <laughs> that, too. I'm sorry, but I don't know what the hell it is, but their pizza is still better. It, p- pizza in Italy, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's a little Water. bit better. Oh, well, maybe water. it is the water. You might, you're probably right. It's like a New York bagel. It's like New York pizza. It's the water. You can try and say, yeah. oh, we make New York be- bagels yep. here in L.A. They don't taste the same. Because you can go true. and get uh, a bagel from a cart in New York City, and it's just as good as the gourmet store you go to in New York City. So you can get a bagel for 50 cents and be like, that was the best bagel I've ever had. Yep. No doubt. Tenth and what is it? Tenth and second? Is that what it is? With that great bagel store what the hell's the name of that bagel store it's on 10th and i believe second avenue in new york city it's been there forever and it's think phenomenal on any of us are going to know kristen's in la well, we're here lived there she i lived, lived in new there york. i used to live on third and 11th i'm trying to think which one you're talking about oh um, god what it was the something bagels that beautiful bagels or <laughs> Liberty wonderful bagels, bagels is the big one right now and that is <sighs> um, in closer to Macy's like Herald Square area um, but you're right bagels in New York are better than anywhere else in the United States and pizza too and I pizza mean, too I will, yeah it's true you can get a two dollar slice and you it's going to be incredible I love it love living in New York I, I, matter of fact I was just talking to a friend of mine about well Garrison Keeler. you know Garrison right Mm-hmm. I was talking to him, and he's in New York right now, and I said, God, I really do miss living in New York. I mean, I love living here, don't get me wrong, with the family and all the rest of it, but when I was living in New York, holy God, did I have fun. I'd probably be dead now if I still lived in New York, though. You think? It's, um, I loved it, and it's it's really fun to live there young and broke, oh, too. It's fun. so exciting, honestly. Yeah. Um, and if I lived there now, I'd want to make sure I'm making, like, at least $5 million. Well, yes. Yeah, you got to make really some dough. fancy because I think I have fancier taste now. But um, I, it, it, the city is so romantic. It's, like, the it best is. city yep. to fall in love with. Yep. Um, just walking around, getting lost, wandering around. I went in December um, to go see the Broadway opening of A Beautiful Noise. And just even walking around at Christmas time, it's just absolutely magical. No city can replicate that in the U.S. All right, young lady, we'll be at it again tomorrow. And I want you to be both wearing a burqa tomorrow, both of you. We're going to try to fit in. I'm going to wear a kitty. Oh, there's the kitty. How's the kitty doing? She's doing great. She gets in the closet before I do every morning. She loves you guys. (laughs) You sit there. I mean, I need to record her one day because she sits in a little kitty ball and purrs the whole time you guys Aww. are on. I don't know what it is. She finds you guys very soothing. Oh, See, that's how it should it's be. It's very kitty. sweet. We need a studio cat. She's a good baby. It's a good idea. And then I'll just work from home. <laughs> if 
Bye, no, but I, I am like bringing this. I am bringing my golden retriever tomorrow. Oh, God, another dog in studio. Now we got Jude and your dog. I know. That'll be unbelievable. And they both have golden retriever energy. So, they do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, what's your cat's name again? This is London. London. There you go. London. London. <laughs> Ooh, you see, oh, you said her eyes got huge. Yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah. yeah so London. She, loves, she does. She loves men's deep voices. Seriously. Oh, she does. Um, our vet has a big, deep voice, and she just snuggles in with him every time she goes. You should play Tony Joe White's Poke Salad Annie for him, because she'd, <laughs> she'd love it. Poke Salad Annie. Some of y'all never been down south too much. I want to tell you a little bit about this so you understand what I'm talking about. I love Tony Joe. He's dead now, you know, unfortunately. All right, we got to go, sister, but we will talk to you on the morrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks Bye, everyone. Kristen Burt, ladies and gentlemen, KB2, as she's known here on the show. Yeah, KB2. All right, we've got to take a break. Be right back in a couple of minutes. We've got some Chris Eggert coming up in about 20, 25 minutes somewhere in there. A bunch of stuff coming up this morning. Great guests, all kinds of stuff right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live on the Tom Bernard Show app or at TomBernardShow.com. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, president at North American Banking Company. And I'm Mike Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a community bank based right here in the Twin Cities, we believe in taking the time to get to know our customers and their businesses. And part of that is hiring and cultivating a team of experienced lenders. When your business banks with us, you're not training in a new inexperienced banker. In fact, our bankers have worked with many of the same customers for years, earning their trust. We get to know you and your business, and you get to know and rely upon us. When your business is looking to capitalize on an opportunity or solve a problem, we'll be here to help you. Tom here. I know Brad and Mike, and I trust that with my banking, they've personally delivered on everything they've just said. So why not bank with my banker, North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. This is Bob Sansevier, and I want to tell you about Dave Bialki from Bialki Law. Dave represented my wife, Mary, when she had a significant workplace injury. She was very happy with the job Dave did. If you have a work-related injury and have Dave represent you, I'm betting you'll be happy too. Dave is a down-to-earth guy. He grew up in northern Minnesota, rides a Harley, and worked various jobs doing concrete, electrical, plumbing, roofing, and carpentry work. Dave works for people with work-related injuries. If you work construction, or anywhere for that matter, and you're hurt or even just hurting, you should talk to Dave. Let's face it, our bodies wear out. If your body is worn out from work, if your knees or back or shoulders hurt from things you do at work, do what Mary did. Call Dave and talk to him about it at Bialki Law to set up a free initial conversation. Consultation. The number to call is 763-571-2410. That's 763-571-2410. Or visit BialkiLaw.com. That's B-I-A-L-K-E Law.com. Hello. Hello. Very good. My greeting. Hello. How are you today? Hi, sir. It's nice to see you for the uh, first time today. Magnificent. Uh, coming in this morning, I was out in the parking lot. A man walked up, said Hello. He's in the build. Matter of fact, he's on this floor somewhere. Uh, Anderson Trucking. You know where that is? No. It's somewhere on this floor, but I don't know where it is. It must be maybe on the other side. I don't know. This building's wild. That's a great building. I love this building. Well, I love this building, but I just mean like, I after touring another, like it's just, you just never know what's on this floor. We no, go, that's true. Yeah. And you never know what's behind the doors. Like ours is a nice, you know, modest size, mm -hmm. perfect for us. We actually have an extra room. And then you go into another one, and it's like, whoa! Well, that one we went into the other day, the that thing goes on forever. It kept going. It did. It went on. Forever. I was like, <laughs> how is this possible? It was huge. But yeah, his name was Mark as well, because we met a Mark the other day. Well, as a matter of fact, I had seen him uh, before, but he uh, he was going on and on about how he never misses the show, and he downloads it every day, and. We gotta, uh, we gotta do some tutorial maybe on Channel Five Eyewitness News, something how to download a podcast. <laughs> That's gonna be on do. the news station. Yeah. <laughs> well, you ever watch their news? It sucks. Oh, right? that's true. Like Chris Anger. I thought he was on here. And never mind. I was like, yeah. damn it. It feels weird to talk shit be. about him not in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Feels a little odd. Exactly right. Yeah, we will actually be filming something here in the next like two weeks with you, Tom. 
and well, then we are. yeah yeah because i'm actually so the week that we are all going to take off for fourth of july i'm actually going to work those days and then produce all those videos why are you working those days uh because i have uh i got things coming up in the next couple of months oh, that take time take off, time off. Yeah. and i was like just find some so i'm going to take off that there's that friday that i'm going to have off yeah. and then i'm going to take off whatever that day before the fourth of july plus the fourth but i'm going to work that whatever wednesday thursday friday and pr- just produce all those videos. We're going to have all sorts of them. They're going to be all over Facebook. We're going to be putting yeah, them out in media. Yeah, and it takes sense. a long time to be able to produce all those things because like, we want to make sure we do them right. Sure. So, yeah. So I'm going to take those three days and just exclusively work on videos that we shoot. Because, so, yeah, yeah, oh, sorry. Go very on. quickly, I just want to say, because I still run into people that say, I have no idea how to download a podcast. I've been mm-hmm. hearing about it, but I have no idea how to do it. So it's very easy that anybody's got a phone, that, that blue and white A you just yeah. hit that. That's the, you, to get to the app, and then you just hit the Tom Bernard Show app, and you're in. Yeah. It's nothing. I mean, people think it's very complicated. Yeah. My mom listens to this show every single day. Oh, okay. And if my mother can do it, trust yeah. me, well, anybody can, yes. But I'm picking up more and more people on the street are coming and saying hello, people I've never met before. They love the show. I had a guy, as a matter of fact, this morning as well, tell me that he's got to learn how to download the show because he doesn't know how to do that. So I said, just looking for that little blue and white A on your phone, hit that, and it'll pop up and you're there. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, you got Bluetooth, it'll be on your car radio. Mm-hmm. I was you listening, know. I listen when I walk a lot. Sometimes I listen to the family podcast because I'm currently in a walking challenge. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh. And uh, who, Hubbard. Who challenge you? Oh, Hubbard? Uh, yeah. Sorry, Hubbard deal? I'm on the My Walker team, and it's the first time I've been included in like a work event for anything. Like, a, well, you're part of the team. And so because of that, I feel... There's a reason for that, by the way. <laughs> so because of that, I feel the extreme need to be, like, a very effective team member. Sure. I'm telling you guys, I did, like, 18,000 steps yesterday. Wow. Oh, uh, what a waste of time. What are, what, Unless you you're going to do about 50,000, just yeah. forget it. Man, that's like Disney steps there. <laughs> that's a I, lot. No, let me give you the exact... 18,399 mm-hmm. steps. And how, how far is that for you? Because of your 10 stride. miles. 10 miles? Because yeah. of your stride? Yeah, 10.05 miles. Um, but I'm feeling really bad because the first two days I've kind of like literally stepped it up. And now I my, I, my feet hurt. I don't want to walk anymore. Yeah. So I can't get a zero today. <laughs> yeah. So I got to like figure it out. I don't know. I'm One gonna... thing you got to do someday though, because huh. I did it a couple of times. You got to walk a marathon, not an actual, but walk the distance of a marathon just to I, see what those people go through. I've only ran a half marathon. I've never done a oh, full. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, in Kuwait, I ran a half marathon. And Who was I, chasing you? <laughs> everyone. I knew it. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of, oh, pe- lot of people money. Um, but <laughs> oh, that's really I, nice. I don't think I'll ever do a marathon. And I'm, I, yeah. I run a lot. Like, I do, like, three to four miles, like, every other day or so. Um, I don't. I think 10 miles is can be enjoyable. I don't see myself ever enjoying 26. That's, no, I understand that. That sounds terrible. I did a yeah. speech once because they asked me to run in a marathon, and I said, okay, I'll run in the marathon, but we don't want the Kenyans. <laughs> <laughs> those guys win every goddamn race now. I agree. They Man, those fellas can run, yeah. can't they? Yeah. Woo! Did, you know what we should do? This is what you would do but really good, is that Susan, Susan G. Coleman Walk for the Cure. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's very nice. It's like 10 miles a day for three days, and you end yeah. up doing 30 miles, and yep. you camp out. I mean, we don't have to camp, right? We you camp, camp out, really? Yeah. Like, where do they walk it? I, it's all over the city. I mean, it, people do that. I'm not I think, camping in downtown Minneapolis. I can promise you that. I don't that know. Ain't happening. I, somebody has done it. I mean, so many people have done it. Should call in. You would kill in that because you can just keep walking. I do walk. I can walk forever. You can walk forever. Because I got those Easter ham calves. I can walk f- for quite a bit. I uh, love it. I love walking. I get a little really impatient. I always want to run. Um, yeah. But I don't think that. I could run 10 miles a day for three days in a row while sleeping outside. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my running. God. It's like what a are, So where do you sleep? I, I just don't understand where All right, you sleep. I'm going to do some research because I feel like that's something we could right, do. Get back to me. Okay. We, I, can, I would do that with you if you want to walk a 10 or 20 or 30 or whatever. For three days? Okay, but I, I don't care. All right. The hell do I care? I'll do it. As long as you don't talk. I, I'm i fine with that. <laughs> but you know that you would die if I didn't talk. That's probably true. You would go, what's wrong with you? What's the matter with you? What, do you, you hate me? It. You hate me now? I know like, you hate me. Yeah, let's get that. No, I seriously, I love walking. I walk every day. As a matter of fact, the reason I do walk a mile at my house before I, I come in every day 
is it literally makes me feel a lot better than when I first woke up. Yeah. It just does. makes me feel great. You're, you get the blood flow through your noggin and all that good stuff. You're good at that. I will not wake up a minute earlier than I have to. Yeah, I'm a little older than you, so you get used to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I understand what you're saying, because when I was your age, I wouldn't do it either. No. But now it's a different kettle of fish, and you move on with life. Um, it's almost embarrassing how the time I wake up to the time I get out the door, how quick that time is. It's like yeah. three minutes. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put on a little menin tomorrow. What do you right? Say? Take the extra step. That's the extra put on a little deodorant. That'd be good. Bye, oh. Menon. Bye, <laughs> Menon. Do you and Catherine sleep in the same bed? Not on work nights. Okay. Well, actually, we we don't at pretty much at all anymore. We're yeah. you know we uh, we get together sometimes, and it's a wonderful thing and all the rest of it. But I I think I'm a very restless sleeper. Sure. Yeah. So she because I'm always tossing and turning. I wake up about ten times a night. Sure. I al- I wake up a lot, and it would wake her up. And more than anything, because Jude would be in the bedroom, too, that I'd wake him up more than... Yeah. I'd wake him up, and then he'd start making noise and wake her up. And Sure. So, yeah. I, uh, yeah, we... Once in a while... Obviously, when we go on trips and all that stuff, we sleep together, and all, that's, it's great, and all the rest of it. But, yeah, just to save her sanity, I, we don't sleep together almost hardly ever. Sure. Because I do... I make a lot of noise, apparently. Mm-hmm. I do this. <laughs> Just, I like moan in my sleep. Uh, Why would I moan in my? I don't get it. Why do I do that? My, I don't know. But my husband's he doesn't snore a lot. He doesn't snore often. But when he does, it's sporadic that it's like jazz and it's oh, terrifying. Oh, 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 it's like yeah. silent, silent. And you're like, <gasps> so it, it would even be better if it was constantly and melodic and. You know, you can rely on it, but he puts the fear of God in me. I would imagine so. I was having a dream last night that I was dipping Red Man. I don't know why. Well, I, tobacco? Yeah, I have no idea, and I dreamt that I spat, and in my sleep, I spat. Oh, yeah. No I, way. I, I, I literally, yep. I spat, and then I, 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 I woke up and was like, did I just spit on my pillow? And I looked, and there was a big old glob of spit. I just, yes. just yeah. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, my brain was like, this is reality, and we are spitting on the pillow. Um, That is terrifying when something like that yeah. happens, when, like, your worlds bleed, and you go, Wah. Yeah. Was it a bad dream? No, I think uh, I was, was just, just hanging out. I think we were just, like, hanging out at the baseball game, just, like, dipping oh, chalk. Oh, okay. Well, That's there you go. Is that something you used to do ever? I chewed from the age of about 12 and a half until the day after I found out I was going to have Kinley. Wow. Yeah. So that was, I was 27. So I chewed, I chewed a 10 a day for almost 14 years. Oh my God. And then, cause I always said like, I got no reason to quit. I yeah. don't have anything to quit for. Like why? I, I love to chew tobacco and I'd be on the air and I would stick it. I wouldn't put it in my bottom lip. I'd put it in my top lip so I could still be on the microphone and it wouldn't impede my speech. You're um, a, that is disgusting. That's awful. It's so gross. It's so gross yeah. and I love it. And then when my uh, when my daughter's mom was like, hey, by the way, I'm pregnant. Uh, I went up north. I went deer hunting. I sat out in the stand for three days. I chewed one last tin. I threw it in the garbage yeah. on the way back and I never had another one since. That you is gotta impressive. Do it. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to do that though. Yeah. Drop really some, an over a decade hobby, or not hobby, but addiction and drop it like that. That is, that's impressive. Yeah. You can do it. Oh, when I quit smoking, because, yeah, I was a, I loved smoking cigarettes. I loved How it. How long ago did you quit? Oh, my God, it's forever now. Yeah, I actually quit too. smoking before I quit drinking, which was, I, it was, uh, smoking was almost harder because it was really, like, bam. It, it felt like you could feel the effect. Like, drinking kind of comes and goes for me of wanting to drink, but yeah. not so, I mean, it's been over 10 years now, so I barely even care. But smoking was a hard one. I had to go, I went to Walgreens. I had done a, a class at Brown College, and I was going to drive home to Woodbury, and I I was like, I either am going to go to Walgreens and get a pack of cigarettes or the patch. Sure. And so I went in there, and I was like, fine. Give me, like, the 300-pound man patch, you know, because they have, like, different <laughs> categories. And I was strong, like, isn't it? I want the strongest one. I put that bad boy on me, and even the smell of cigarettes made me nauseous. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And then when I would drink... Like, I'd go out and drink with my friends. I was like, all right. I'd slap two of them on my back just to make sure. That you didn't smoke. <laughs> didn't smoke. Yeah, and because good. even getting near the smell, I'd be like, Because you're so, you're, I mean, it was for sure nicotine overdose. Yeah. Because I was not oh, doing sure. the right thing by yeah. any means. 
well, that's how I quit, and it's. Uh... So I have a question. Huh? Do you think I ever inhaled because I French inhaled? But I don't know if it ever left my mouth. It just I, went in my nose and in my mouth, and then I just did an exit. I don't think it ever went in my lungs. I don't know, but I, if right. that's the point. I mean, the thing is, you don't have, you don't get too many fun things no, in life. I don't. If you weren't inhaling, what the hell were you doing? I was just trying to look cool, probably. <laughs> <laughs> which? What'd you debatable. go through? Oh, so which you could never do anyway because you're. <laughs> no, I saw that. I look meant is no, smoking cigarettes didn't. look cool anymore? I used to think it looked. Yeah, not anymore. But now it looks crazy. You know, it's funny. You watch Twilight Zone. It's like, do you have 55 cigarettes on you? Because everybody wants It's like, and good gosh. Ash tra- <laughs> trays are like the fullest thing you've <laughs> yeah, ever seen. Absolutely. It's like a sand dune of ash. Man. <laughs> and remember back in the day, I mean, that's the, pre- the go-to present was ashtray. You'd give yeah. your parents that's an ashtray. Yeah, that's Here true. you go, Mom. I love you. Here's an ashtray. So what? you went, you went, you went with Old Golds, Larks, and then Cool Miles. Those were my three brands. Those I, are your I quit brands. when three after Cool Miles is when I quit. I was whatever was on sale. Oh really? I would go wow. from Camel Lights to Parliaments to yeah. Marlboro oh, Lights because they were all around around. the same. But yeah. whatever on scale or did on ever, sale. Did you ever smoke uh, menthol? Only desperately at a party because oh, there is a like crystallization mental. that happens where you go, this can't be good. Yeah, right. <laughs> can't be good for this you. Can't yeah. be great. Well, yeah. My buddy Ira Ford, he's a, uh, uh, a comedian here in town. Black man, tall guy. Him and I were at a show one night, sitting at the bar, and we're watching the comedian. And this woman walks up behind us and she taps me on the shoulder and goes, uh, "Sir, you dropped your pack of cools on the ground." And uh, Ira and I both look at each other, and Ira goes. Lady, there's a short white guy and a tall black guy sitting here, and you think a pack of cools <laughs> was for the short white guy? I, I don't know if you know this or not. Cools are kind of exclusively the cigarette of the black man. Or she, inner city, anyway. Yeah, and yeah, he, she was yeah. like, you know what? I apologize. I was like, that's good. We're, we're all here to learn together. That's <laughs> an ally. Right, yeah. That's an yeah. ally. Uh-huh. Yeah, because people didn't even know what the hell they were. I could go someplace like, you know, maybe in the exurbs. Yeah. And uh, do you have any cool miles? Like, what is that? They didn't yeah. even know what they were. No, you're right. Because yeah. nobody ever bought them, so mm-hmm. they didn't carry them. Yeah. That was an inner city deal. You're right. Totally. You're absolutely right about mm-hmm. that. Cool miles. That's all I'm saying. I mean, when you're drinking, though, any cigarette, any cigarette will do. Yeah. You can't, you, you, drink, you go, well. someone will say, I got a menthol. Like, one drink in, you go, I'm good. And then, like, three drinks in, you go, give me one of those menthols. See, that's the other thing, too, is the cool mild and the drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You had to have that deal going. Oh, nothing was better than a cigarette break, especially when you worked in the serving industry. You weren't allowed to have a break at all. But if you smoked, you were allowed to. You Okay, Brittany, you can go have a cigarette quick. Okay. We have to oh. take a break here quickly, but i got to ask you if you've ever seen this, because my mother did it every time. When my mother was on the phone, she would be smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Which is okay? so gross because you know it's indoors. So she's oh, indoors. She's on the phone. She's smoking a cigarette, and she takes a huge, long deal. And I am not exaggerating when I tell you a puff of smoke lasted about five minutes coming <gasps> out of her mouth. I was she'd be talking, and the smoke would just be billowing out of her mouth. Like, Mom, where the hell did you store all that? Smoking indoors Christ. was one of those things that you went to people's houses, and it was just totally normal. And now it's it just was, wild. Yeah. When you go to yeah. somebody's house and they smoke indoors, you go, what the? Like, I know, you never huh? see that anymore. That's wild. It's true. We have to take a break because we have the lovely and talented Chris Eggert coming up in a couple of minutes. Can I call him lovely and talented? He is both. Okay, good. We'll take a break. Be right back. And Chris Eggert will join us in just a couple of minutes. I'm just now approaching the end of my 60-day weight loss program with MNFatLoss.com. I've lost over 25 pounds. I feel fantastic. Getting around is just a lot easier. My clothes fit better. There just really isn't a downside to losing the weight. And by the way, let me say that again. There is no downside to losing weight. You'll be happier. You'll be healthier. All of it. Now I'll be going into the maintenance phase of the MNFatLoss.com program, adding in a few more food choices to the mix. See, that I think is very smart, to do it for a couple of months, then you take a break for about a month. You want to go back. If you have to go back, then go back. Really, very, very smart. I love the program so much, I'm planning to go back on a weight loss program with the goal of losing another 25 or so, and I'll be down, yeah, I'll be down about 55 pounds, something like that. You will absolutely be able to lose weight like I've done and still enjoy the foods you love this summer. And by the way, I'm not making that up. You can. If you want to find out the secret to losing 20 to 30 pounds in just eight weeks like I'm doing and I did, that's about a pound of fat every day. 
No exercise required. To schedule your free consultation, go to mnfatloss.com. That is mnfatloss.com. Results may vary. Be sure to tell them the team at mnfatloss.com that Tom Bernard sent you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Eggert joins us having his breakfast right now. What are you eating? Uh, chili cheese burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Chili cheese Fritos, Sir. ladies and gentlemen. Chili cheese Fritos. It is I like... 8.20 a.m. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I've, I've been up since 3. Still. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, still. It, it, the, the, well, you guys know, know the, the, little the check wall out. of yeah. snacks is like mm-hmm. five feet away from uh, here, and I just was craving it, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done it. I'm sorry. I but, didn't mean to shame you. Food. You know what? There's no bad food. We are not food shamers. You're doing great. Yeah. Okay. I, I had a half a Dairy Queen cake before I came in this oh. morning. So. Oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah, I, I love, love breakfast Queen. cake. Mm-hmm. I love it. Don't you love Dairy Queen? Heck yeah, I, I do. do. I love Dairy yeah. Queen. Are they as big as... Is it true that that is made with potato, mat, whatever? That the ice cream is made, one of the ingredients there, ice cream, is a potato. I don't care. It's so good. Well, no, it's delicious. I don't, I don't think care, legally but... we can call it ice cream either. It's like. Oh, yeah, ice potato. Dairy treat. Dairy yeah. treat. It's dairy yeah. treat, yeah. I think I used to date her. Dairy treat. It was back when I was a teenager. <laughs> she dropped you, though. She. Oh. But here, let me turn so you can get the full backstab. Again, in. you can reach the get knife because I put it right in, in your head. chest. Uh, before we move on, i got to tell you. <laughs> And I was just talking to Brittany about this in the hall. Uh, I was getting out of my car this morning, and a man walks up and introduced himself. He said, Tom, I just want to say we, uh, we're in the building now. We moved into the building, and uh, we've been listening to your show, and I love your show, and blah, 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 blah. And I said, uh, let me guess. Your name is Mark. And he goes, how did you know that? And I said, because the last three men I've met, their names, everybody's name is Mark. What a, what a coincidence that is. Because right is across weird. the hall, uh, right across the hall from us, Mark, I just, Brittany and I just said hello to that Mark, but that's a different Mark. Then we had the other Mark, and then there was a third Mark. And my middle name is Mark, so we got it all covered. You wow. see what I'm saying? That's so many Marks. It's a lot of Marks, man. I don't see any potato in these ingredients. Good. So that's always been a lie. What um, are the ingredients? Uh, brrr, magic, magic, fat, in non fat Love. milk, sugar, corn syrup, whey, mono, diclercerides, artificial flavors. Now, wait um, a minute, what comes in that are artificial flavor? But, like, that's we're getting farther down the list on that one, so it's going to be minimal, right? Yeah, so that somebody just made that up that it doesn't have potato in it. Yeah. Maybe it did in the beginning or something. Maybe it did. I love I, Dairy Queen is as good oh, as it gets. So hey, good. don't sleep on those diglycerides. They're really good. Extra, I always say extra diglycerides for me, <laughs> sir. You just add sprinkles to that, and you've got a great blizzard. Oh, they, they won't. I don't think they make crunch anymore. It was a whole thing. But if the, you could get them to do a dip cone with crunch on it, and double it up, was the jam. Mm-hmm. Was yeah. Was that was the answer? I think I'm gonna write a series of books, like crime novels. Mm-hmm. And have the, have the like the private detective's name be diglyceride, Ooh. diglyceride Johnson. <laughs> what do you think? If it, like his first name is Di. No, diglyceride is the whole first name. You got to say the whole first name. Okay. Diglyceride Johnson. What do you think? <laughs> so like he's that. Jewish. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Muttel, Muttel, the cop. That's who it is. I used to actually knew a guy named Muttel. You don't hear that name much anymore. No. You sure don't. Nice Jewish boy named Mutt. Hey, Muttel, what are you doing? I love that about the, in the old, you know, west of Penn Avenue, uh, Plymouth and Penn Avenue. You'd go over and everybody's grandfather talk like this. I don't know why, but they all, Thomas, have you been over to Plitman's today? Yes, I was <laughs> over there, sir. A fabulous delicatessen. That's all I know. I don't know, where, the, where did that speech pattern come from? Is that a combination of... Israel, New York, and Minnesota? What is a combo? You think? Kind of would seem to make sense. I guess, mm-hmm. but God, it was a wonderful neighborhood. You could get a nice sandwich. That's all I'm saying. Homewood Bowl, baby. Been watching a lot of the uh, marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh, Catherine just finished that. Yeah, yeah. and it's got uh, all those dialects, man. Just all <laughs> really? steamrolled into one. Yeah. Well, what's his name? Tony. Tony Galoob. Tony Galoob's in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he plays the dad. He's really good. Monk. Oh. Yeah, Monk. He was terrific in Monk. So good. You are correct. So, Chris, 
Yes. What are you doing, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Chris Eggett. What kind of name is Eggett? Is that a German thing? Uh, French, German, right on the line there of uh, France and Germany. There's the little uh, part of the world there where my people come from, I guess. Well, shouldn't your name be pronounced Eger then? Yeah, Chris actually, Eger. I, I think it is pronounced yeah, Eger there. That yeah. Salzburg area, I think, is oh, kind of sure. where it. Yep. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't. I did a little genealogy during one of my lovely medical leaves, which is really fun <laughs> to do on um, painkillers. Yeah, I bet. I bet it's absolutely true. I can imagine myself in the old country speaking French or whatever it was that we spoke there. I've only been in 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 France once, and I've never been in Paris. Catherine tells me Paris is magnificent, but I've never been there. But uh, it was really funny because I'm in, kind of taking a walking tour right along the border of, I guess it would have been, does, I don't know what the hell it was on the border of. I can't remember. Holland, maybe. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it was right on the border of Holland, and I'm over there walking around. Two guys came up to me and said, are you in the Secret Service? And I said, no, why? And he said, you look just like oh, Jean, 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 Jean. Apparently, I look just like some guy who's in the Secret Service in France. So I don't know what the hell that means. Well, also, well, he's uh, not a good Secret Service guy, if everybody yeah. knows. Well, he's their buddy, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Every, everybody knows the legend of Jean, 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 Jean. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> oh, chante. That's all I have to say. There was a movie about him. Yeah, they probably, yes, exactly. Uh, the Laurent family, when I was growing up, very, very French. Very proud to be Cyril and Marg Laurent. Wonderful people. That's all I have to say. I would just like to state that I think that um, that it's French or German, depending on whoever was like the more powerful country at the time. So I don't want there to be some kind of a perception that I'm French. I'm not French. Oh, you're not just, French at all? Just to be clear. One of the Laurent uh, family was very proud of that. And by the way, I should mention... That our first day in ninth grade, Guy and Greg Laurent were twin brothers in the family. I went to St. Anne's with them and then to Jordan Junior High School, then on to North High School. And the first day at Jordan Junior High School, we're sitting there and the teacher's doing the roster. Tom Bernard, here. Brittany, here. Rudy, here. And he said, oh my God, the laughter. And he got so pissed off. His name was Guy Laurent. And he goes... Tom Bernard, here. Brittany, here. Guy Laurent. <laughs> we're like, what? He goes, Guy Laurent. Guy Laurent. Guy Laurent. We're like, what? Whoa. <laughs> what the hell is he you saying? You are trying too hard, sir. Yeah, he really is. And I, met, I looked over at Guy, and he's like, what the hell is he talking about? He's like, is that me? Am <laughs> he, I cool? He found out he was Guy Laurent. Guy Laurent. <laughs> Guy. Mm. We called him Guy for about three weeks. Hey, Guy, how you doing? Guy, which he didn't know would become very popular later mm-hmm. in life. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Right. Hey, real quick, uh, thanks to Rob and to uh, Polanyi for dropping a line to me because uh, I screwed it up. It's not Tony Galoob, who I have no idea who that is. It's Tony Shaloub. You know, Shaloub. That, what's weird about that is I knew that, but I was thinking Galoob, too. Yeah, Galoob. Why? I wonder why. Is there a Tony Galoob? Who there is, has to be a Tony Galoob. Be. If yeah. you're a but Tony Galoob, give us a call here at the Tom Bernard Show. Is there a Guy Laurent out there? Is there? Is there, is there <laughs> Are you out there? Your blood pressure is shot up. <laughs> the concern that you have. <laughs> Listen, Guy. Listen, Guy Laurent here. Get to the bottom oh, yes, of Hello, this is a Guy. Can I help you? You want to know why we thought it was Galoob? Because Tony Galoob is a Ponzi scheme uh, hedge fund guy from 2015. There that's you go, Tony Galoob. Tony Galoob. Yeah. I was like, I know that name from somewhere. I knew yes, it. That's why it sounds it like, like a French sex. Uh, galoob? Something. You know what I mean? So like Catherine, a, you want a Galoob tonight? Uh, do we gotta, should we, uh, should you we need add... to grab the bottle of Galoob. <laughs> <laughs> That's really it. Very professional. Very professional, Iger. Newsman over there. <laughs> God, I love that. Yeah, so Tony Galoob and Tony yeah. Shaloub. They're Shaloub. two different diff- mm-hmm. different people. Mm-hmm. But I, I, thought this, I thought it was Galoob, too. Yeah, Galoob. What the hell? Okay. So, Chris, are we living nope. in a very happy world today? Uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like now would be the time to launch your presidential bid if you were going Ask to. Ask not. Should I run for president? Everybody else I is. Mean, I mean, everybody else is as of today. 
Chris, I got to be honest with you, and I'm not trying to be a prick here, or being a smartass. I can't yeah. find one person that whole group that I'd even vote for. I, this is the best we got, really. I don't know much about North Dakota's governor. He was the he was, I think, the latest. Pence made his announcement earlier today. Oh right, and then, yeah. Yep. Um, Doug Burgum. I'm guessing we have some listeners who are probably a little bit more familiar with, um, you know, what kind of guy he is and how he operates. I still the Chris Christie thing is interesting to me. Yeah. He because he's straight up, unlike all the other candidates, he's straight up saying he's going to go like right at Trump, and yep. nobody else. Nobody else will. So it'll be interesting to see if Christie even is polling high enough to get into any kind of a debate. Right, right. Like what, how that would play out. Because I guess when he ran for president last time, I mean, or no, his polling numbers right now are like at 1%. So he's not even live. Right. Uh, And so I I think you got to be a certain, you got to register a certain percentage to even get into any kind of debates or anything. Should it go that long? Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, I mean, just from a like pure entertainment standpoint, I would I would be entertained to watch, a, you know, uh, that kind of a dialogue take place. Do you ever meet him? No, I've met him a couple of times. Yeah. And he's a lot bigger in person than he is on camera. And now picture him on camera. He is yeah. a big fella. I will. T- he's got to be tipping about what, 350, something like that. Big guy. How tall is he? He's a little over six, right? Gotta be. Yeah. Wasn't there a picture of him just sitting on a beach by himself, eating an ice cream cone? That was that was at at the Breakers Hotel. Yeah, that's what it was. It yeah. was. Yeah. 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 A matter of fact, that's where I saw him the first time was at the Breakers Hotel, and he he was not friendly. I do. I, he wasn't, you know, an a hole or anything like that. He just. Yeah. I think yeah. he wanted to stay to himself, probably. Otherwise, I, I suppose if somebody starts talking to him, everybody's gonna want to. That makes sense. But, yeah, I just I think there are some halfway decent people involved in it. But president? I wish we could get a president that would actually not be in it for the money. Wouldn't that be great? Unlike Trump and Biden, who are both in it for the money. Can we get somebody who's not in it for the money? What do you say? Well, that's why, well, that's why it would be. I've always thought, like, why aren't some of these, like, brilliantly rich guys? Yeah. Like, guys who, I mean, you know, like rich beyond measure or super smart or, you know, yeah. whatever. And I know, I know uh, Donald Trump had a fair amount of wealth, I, but, um, you know, why aren't your Tim Cooks of the world or your, you I know, like wh- whoever Cook. it might be, yeah. not, why aren't they like running Tim for it? Because they don't want to lose money. Yeah, right? they, they don't want the pay cut. That's why. Yeah, they don't want probably. the pay cut. They don't want the stress. They don't want the BS that goes along with the job. They don't want it to impact their business ventures if they run for president and fail, and it you know it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. Or uh, I don't know. I, I I've often wondered the same thing though, because I, I I feel like the pool of people who you know end up running is I I don't know. Do you think we'll ever get another president that's trying to bring us together instead of keep us separate? Because there's more money in keeping us separate, keeping I us think- apart. I think if that person came along, they would probably be trounced out by the rest of the others. Yeah, yeah probably. I like uh, Larry Elder. You guys know a little bit about Larry Elder? Yeah, at he all? seems like a decent oh, yeah. guy. Yeah, I like that yeah. guy. Yeah. I never talked to him, but you ever talked to him? Never talked to him. No, I just happened to uh, listen to his show every once in a while. He's a radio guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he seems like a nice enough guy. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it would be nice to get a president. See, if I ever became president, I'd have two words. Get out. What do you think? Standing Just up on a podium, no what. get out. To who? Like Jackie Gleason. <laughs> who, are you, who are you saying that to, though? To everybody. Oh, okay. Get out, all of you. Get the hell away <laughs> like, from me. Sir, I'm here to give you your breakfast. Get <laughs> out of here. I don't want to turn around and go, Alice, what did you think of that? <laughs> God, that would be a good campaign slogan. It would be very different. Get out. Be... <laughs> Tom Bernard, get out. Get out. Just right across the chest. I like That's it. it. It all works out in the end. There's no question. Um, any of you guys have Androids? Or do you all have uh, Apple phones? I got an Apple phone. Apple phone. Yeah, iPhone for sure. Not a not poor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Kidding, obviously. But no, I, I, I everything is so connected between my laptops, my oh, desktops, yeah. my phone. If I switched over to Android, my it would, everything would just implode. Yeah. 
Well, apparently there's a big uh, problem. There was a sophomore up, a software update on the Android phones, and now a bunch of people are calling 911 accidentally. Oh, no. And um, so much so that I think it was Anoka County. Uh, no, it wasn't Anoka County. It was at Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center. One, okay. one of the northern metro mm-hmm. uh, cities had a big problem with it. Their dispatch center got overwhelmed. They seemed like the amount of calls shoot up and they're they're holding a news conference today with the dps to try to like get people to figure out what to do with their phones so it's not doing that Mm -hmm. because every time a 911 call comes through even if it's a hang up like they have to follow through with it oh yeah so that means if a real 911 call is coming in then um then they can't handle that I, I think the Apple phones also have like a SOS feature that I will set off yes. from time to time. Yep. I have no idea how. It um, does. You're it's, right. It's become a very, a very big deal. And um, it, what I learned today is you're supposed to stay on the phone if you mess up and call. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I can feel the panic. I bet you that it's sure. an automatic feeling of, oh, hang up quick. But you're right. Yeah. Maybe follow but through. But if you stay on and go, oh, sorry, that was a missed dial. Then they can close the case. They can move on. They can get on to something else. That, that's something we had on the news this morning that I was. I'm always. I, was I always feel like it's one of those things where, okay, so I, I most people I know have an iPhone, but there's something to be said that a lot of really smart people I know have Android. Everybody, yeah. Anybody absolutely. who's like very intelligent, like especially like in our. Um, at Hubbard, too, the people that are in charge of things, all of a sudden they'll pull out an Android and I go, maybe they're on to something. Mm. But I'm too dumb to have to switch up between them. So. Well, <laughs> the biggest thing I've noticed with iPhones, especially because I have the iPhone XX, yeah. and I've noticed that when you hit that like 18-month to two-year mark, oh, yeah. maybe it's just me, yeah. but I'm just saying all of a sudden my Siri doesn't work as uh, well, directions don't yeah. work as oh, well. Yeah. It's almost like they time it out to where, hey, we have a brand new phone. That is going to be you know, announced in the next six weeks. Oh, magically, your phone just starts to poo-poo the bed. Now you're like, well, now, now I have to get a new phone. And they just magic. It seems like it's, it's a little too on the nose. Like, it's a very big coincidence. Am I, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong okay. at all. I, I definitely. There's a timer on that. Uh, Chris, uh, on a side note, you know, last week when you were talking about that crash, the wrong way crash that happened in Oakdale, will you give us a follow up on that? I know that yeah, you posted we, something. Yeah, we actually, um, we actually have a, a story in the news this morning about that because there's a fundraiser underway right now for the little girl. Um, she was injured. Her father was killed. She's at Gillette right now, and uh, we interviewed a family friend this morning, and they basically said that. Like in their mind, she's in God's hands. Like we don't, she's that, she's like right there. And um, a, a very, you know, Ugh. sad interview, but you could tell that the person is a person of faith because they're trying to, you know, kind of kind of leave it there. But we, yeah, we have a, um, a link to their GoFundMe at KSTP.com today, actually. So three-year-old, yeah. right? That's how old she is, yeah. three years old? Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, I saw the, that yeah. link on your page, the, and I shared it. Uh, I'm going to share that on the Tom Bernard page, because right now they're trying to raise $15,000, and they're about at 6000 and I feel like it just feels like you, with no control, you, at least we can help them hit that mark. Nevea Ripka is her name, so, yeah. Ripka, R-I-P-K-A. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing that one. Yeah, it's so sucks mm. I, that, that you guys probably have experienced wrong way drivers quite a bit working the early morning sure I, I mean yeah. I, I i've encountered i can think of five or six of them in the last two or three years and it's and and that's when you have the road to yourself and you can kind of at least see it coming and sort of have an opportunity to react to it but what the heck do you do when you're you know when it's a busier part of the day and you got a car coming right at you it's just ugh, awful it is awful, no question. But so, how much do they need to raise? Fifteen thousand. And how much do they have? They're at six thousand and two hundred right now. So Brittany just told me if somebody will come up with the other five thousand, she'll kick in the four thousand. Obviously, Very obviously nice that will. Thank, thank you. Yeah. What do you think, Britt? I mean, that seems about right. One second, Justin. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if um, the people would do that if we asked them to do that if they'd actually do it. We well, I mean, we're I'm gonna post it on our page and hopefully we can watch it. Uh, I'll keep an eye on it because, 
man, they lost, she lost her father, and now, I mean, the photo oh, of her Jesus. in the hospital is three uh. years old. Three-year-old little, cute, I mean, she's so cute. In the picture they posted, she's blowing on a little flower. Um, she's just so cute. Oh, God. I know, so. Why'd you show me that? We're work. We're gonna Babies. work on. We're gonna work on helping them out. Well, like I that said, one got me this. That got know. me this morning. Same. We'll show the, the, we the little some, girl. Yeah. Why don't we do some matching? See how much money we can raise, and then we'll whatever is left over, Brittany can pay it. Done. Or maybe I can. I. We'll we'll we'll, oh. we'll, uh, we'll 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 keep an eye on it, and we'll try to get them to their fifteen thousand. It'd be fun to get them to their fifteen thousand. Can we set something up on the website or something? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Cause yeah, whatever's left over, and we'll we can take care of that, don't you think? I think we could we could help out there for okay. sure. I mean, there's it's you have so lack she's of made control. me sad now. Show me that kid's picture. I know she's. I love so little cute. kids. So yeah, we're gonna. Send okay, them. so how would people get a hold of us to donate money to the cause? I'm gonna I'm gonna post it on our Facebook. Okay. So uh, and Chris posted it on his. I posted it on mine this morning, and then I'll put it on our Twitter, or Facebook, and we'll try to help them. I mean, fifteen thousand dollars seems so doable with what they're dealing with. Yeah, so if we could yeah. hit that mark for them, that would be amazing. We'll get it done. No problem. Just you can give me an Ugh. update every day and we'll go from there. We're going to, we're going to, yeah, for sure. All right, Pally. So yeah, what we'll do is we'll do a daily tab and how much whatever we've raised, we'll match that until we get to 15,000. That's amazing. Be awesome. that will be good, man. I'm glad you guys brought that up because I hate little children that are suffering. I hate that. I know. More than anything. Mm. So what else? We're also going to have to do another fundraiser. It's the Get Rid of Chris Eggert fundraiser. If we can raise 50000 bucks. Oh, my God. We hit our number already. <laughs> <laughs> she just went after you, man. That's all I know. Screw you guys. I'm going home. Oh, go eat That's your Fritos. That's all I know. I'm go back to my breakfast now. You got to go back to your breakfast. Oh, you got to go back to your breakfast in a couple of minutes anyway, don't you? I know. I know. I know. Big shot. Yeah. Uh, so, so what's up in the news that I should know about? Anything good? Um, and, well, yeah, here's something good. The, the St. Saint Paul Saints apparently hit two grand slams last night. Did they really? Yeah. That's pretty special. Yeah. I love that stadium. I just love going to that stadium. A very rare uh, double grand slam evening for Jesus. them. Jesus. So, yeah. Maybe you said teach the twins how to do that. Well, Score they're not more than that one. very well, are they? Did they oh, lose, my God. Like, Seven nothing last night. They have scored four runs in their last five games. I think it is. Jesus, yeah. they well, suck right now. Their 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 middle bullpen is terrible. They can't hit. Let's go. Well, you know we're in a crappy division, so we there's still there's there's always that. Somebody told me I can't remember. It's a, I don't know. It's the AL East or the NL East or whatever. But if we were in that division, we'd be like twelve games back. <laughs> I I just heard the same thing yesterday, and I was like, oh. Whoops. Hey, it's not their fault we're in this division, so let's start playing and win it instead well, of just, you know. 87, didn't they only win 86 games in 87, if I remember correctly? Yeah, it wasn't a, like, ridiculously high amount. Yeah, no, for sure. not at that all. Was... So we can keep it moving. All right, so everything else is good? All good. All good. Weather's looking like it's going to be... Nice. Well, it's, uh, it's yeah, nice it for the like next... It. We're going to be in the back in the 80s and not even really pushing 90 at all here until like I think middle of next week it gets up to 87 again but uh might even be able to turn off the air conditioners how's how are we doing with the smoke from Canada uh, better today better today good good glad to yeah. hear it because uh, I blame my today. buddy Doug Dawson I said you poisonous turd keep that crap up in Toronto where it belongs well right? it's I'd be down now, in Toronto from here actually and, and now it's hitting the East Coast, and it's oh, so, yeah. of course, it's like the worst thing that ever happened in the in the world because the East Coast media is all doing stories about it because sure. New York is in it today. So, you know, even though we've been dealing with it for three weeks, now it matters because it's in New York. I well, that's a very good point. You know, you're making a very good point there. But yeah, that uh, how long did it take you to realize that when you went to Toronto, you went south to Toronto, not up north? I'm going up to Toronto. Well, it's isn't that weird? That's so weird because you have to go. I did not know, but part of 20, I think Doug Dawson told me they were part of like 23 states that are north of Toronto. Uh, not the whole states, some of them. Yeah. Some of them are the whole states. But parts of 22 or 23 states are north of Toronto. That's not fair. Yeah, it's it's super weird. I, I, I spent some time up there as a lad. It's a 
it's a really great place. I love Toronto. Great place. He told me they're building skyscraper after skyscraper now. I guess they're building it's just booming up in Toronto. Yeah, that CN Tower used to be kind of the biggest thing, but I'm guessing yeah. there's probably some other things that have gone up around that. You horn tootin' buster. All right, so we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Everything else is good, I'm assuming. All good, you guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Thanks, Chris. Bye. From now on, he'll be Chris Eger. Eger. On the morning show. That's where we're going. With. Frito lover. <laughs> Look at him. He held up Signed his out with his Fritos he in did. hand. He signed out with a Frito that, to the camera. That is an aggressive chip to eat at 8 a.m. And I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm just saying that is. So what flavor was that? That was chili cheese. Chili cheese. Chili cheese yeah. Fritos at 8 a.m. That's uh, it's 8.45, so you know. That'll put some hair yeah. on your chest. Technically, he's at lunch, though. That's because true. he's yeah, been true. up since 3 a.m. Yeah, so, you know. you do When you do live that early life, yeah, you can have, you're allowed to have at least two to three breakfasts. Do you have a favorite snack chip right now? Well, I. I. Sure. Well, I'm I. so glad you <laughs> asked. Uh, it sounded like Rush Limbaugh. I... I'm currently in uh, a very much so salsa making life. Oh, yeah. Where I've been making a lot of salsa. So I just want a normal good chip. I like the donkey chips. I also just like... Oh, the donkey them. chips are great. So good. Really good. Um, I also like the big old bag from Costco. I just want it to be a basic chip because I'm all about that salsa. All about that salsa. Yeah, and guacamole, too, or just salsa? Oh, I love guacamole as well. Uh. Me and my neighbor Brian are, are are having a salsa off every week where we both <laughs> oh, yeah. we both be making a lot of salsa. We gotta share oh, it because we make thing. it in huge batches. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Get that. You ever heard of popcorners? Yeah, well, I've had them here. Uh, the white cheddar popcorners are phenomenal. They're so good. Hmm. What is your favorite go-to snack? Like, That's probably it. Now. That is right it? now it's the, the the popcorners white cheddar. It's God, pretty good. It's good. It's I had really a, good. You guys had a bunch of bags here and I grabbed one and it was really good. Oh, so that's why they're all gone because I can't have them because you ate them all. I'm sorry. I just Dip had a call. Up. What were you saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got to talk to someone. Uh, Rudy, what's yours? I'm a trail mix guy. Oh, trail mix is good. I yeah. didn't see that coming. Yeah, I like uh, like some M and M's mixed in there, some raisins, God, peanuts. I love yeah. M and M's. Is can you have trail mix without chocolate in it? Because I feel like every time I go to grab trail, trail mix and it doesn't have chocolate in it, I want to be done with it's it. It's a waste. Yeah. yeah why? That, yeah. Just oh, it's just mixed nuts. No, that's that's mixed nuts. I want trail mix. Yeah. yeah. Are the caramel M and M's any good? I've so, never had one. Are good. They? I'd say sound wonderful. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll bring them in. That's ah, a good. I mean, well, do you want me, want me to bring them in? What? Do you want me to bring them in or no? Well, yeah, I mean, if you want to. Okay. Why do you have some at the house? No, I mean, I we all we buy them all the time, but I've I didn't never know. had them, but I, they look really good. Um, I'm a I'm a basic M M&M and M guy. I like the peanut ones oh. too, but the M M&M, and M original M and Ms are still my favorite. Caramel ones are so good. That's what I've heard. We have to take a break. Come back. Faith Jenkins will join us, ladies and gentlemen. Oxygen's killer relationship with Faith, uh, with Faith Jenkins, airing Sundays at 8 p.m. Central Time. We'll talk to Faith right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Listen live at TomBernardShow.com or on the Tom Bernard Show app. Do you ever Google yourself? Are you happy with what you find? Or is it cringy? Are you a business owner or on your company's marketing team? How do you feel when you Google your own place? What do you see? A non-updated social media page you don't even remember making? Ads for your competitors? An old school website with outdated information? Hubbard Interactive can help. They can do it all for your business. They're a Google Premier Partner, so they can use search engine optimization to get your click results higher. They can build a 21st century website for you that communicates all the right things all the best ways. They've got a photo and video department to make your business look sharp. Plus social media, influencer marketing, podcasting, and more. All the things that will make you a lot happier next time you Google yourself. Here's a Google search that you'll find rewarding. Hubbard Interactive. You can see all the marketing tools they've used on hundreds of successful businesses, including an extensive gallery of the great work they could help your venture with. HubbardInteractive.com. Building campaigns that connect. The new Tom Bernard Morning Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. 
We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Oxygen Killer Relationship with Faith Jenkins airing Sundays at 8 p.m. Central Time, hosted by Divorce Court's presiding judge, Faith Jenkins. This true crime series delves into jaw-droppingly evil stories of love that sours and breakups that turn downright murderous. Faith, how are you? I'm good, Tom. How are you? Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to have you here, and i got to point out right away, because I'm looking at the, uh, the mailer, Faith Jenkins, uh, the interview's eight minutes long. We're talking about Oxygen's killer relationship. But I must tell you, Ms. Jenkins, I'm looking at the four pictures they sent. Did you see the pictures they sent out of you? No, I don't. <laughs> okay. The very first one, I'm looking at it right now. And you're not saying anything. You're just looking at the camera. But I'm taking away from the look on your face. Boy, don't make me come over there. <laughs> <laughs> You really do. You got this look in your face like, I'll come over there and knock you out. It's wonderful. Well, well, you know, I I have to say, this is the show is intense, so I'm assuming they take a photo that reflects uh, some of the intenseness and seriousness of of the show that we do. This is an amazing, amazing read, hosted by Divorce Court's presiding judge, Faith Jenkins. This true crime series delves into jaw-droppingly evil stories of love. That sours and breakups that turn downright murderous. And then, I mean, yeah, I mean, this line, these twisted tales of relationships gone bad show what happens when breaking up means only one thing. Someone has to die. Faith, really? Somebody has to die? It, I mean, that's, and that's why people have been so riveted by the show, because we're all wrapping our heads around these cases. Because we can all relate to having a relationship, a love relationship. It doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. We sure. can all relate but we cannot all relate to why, in the end, people choose to kill. And so it's, the, it's looking at the psychology of the mind, looking at the psychology of the criminal mind, because in a lot of these cases, you're talking about people who don't have criminal records. They have not led a life of crime. And, and when you hear the stories from the family members and friends, because we only do cases where family give us, the families give us the okay to tell the story, What's interesting is they know the victim and the perpetrator well because they've been a part of their inner circle and they've been a part of their lives. So we really peel back the layers and tell the story of what happened, when did things go wrong, and why it had to end the way it did. And the reasons vary. Um, Some people, there's money involved. There's a life insurance policy for other people. Oh, sure. There's, 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 There's a secret. There's a, if you watched last, week's episode this past Sunday night, there was a big secret that um, that the person did not want to be revealed and exposed. And for other people, they're just deeply insecure. The relationship is ending, and I don't want anyone else to have you. God, isn't that weird, the relationship? Is, so so their position is they still want to be together. The other, their partner doesn't want to be together anymore. But rather than let them go, they'd rather kill them. Yeah, and, Man. you know, there is a back and forth. Um, because they, I think that both parties know that this is not working out. Mm-hmm. In the end, it's like you, they cannot see their life without this, this person moving on in life without them. So, and that's what's so intriguing because we, many of us, have experienced breakups, divorces, breakups, mm-hmm. just going your separate all of those things. But we, and, and the pain of it, because it's a painful process. But the fact that you would go to that level, that, that extreme of, if I can't have you, no one else can, literally, is, is pretty disturbing. Well, that's very disturbing. I don't understand that whole situation. Why, don't, why can't people just uh, accept that? Uh, it, it, well, I, I should tell you, Faith, that I've been with the same woman now for 42 years. We've been married for 39 years. I mean, I love her dearly. There's no question about that. But I do remember before I met Catherine... I was with a couple of, uh, of, of couple of other women, and I remember one time I woke up, I went downstairs, and at the base of the stairs was my suitcase. <laughs> 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 what do you think, Faith? Should I have taken that uh, as, a, as a negative? That was a pretty big hit. That, that's a <laughs> little direct <laughs> there, aren't we? Flag. It, it is t- it is part of it you just can't accept the fact that they don't absolutely adore you and that's why they get so is it all about you really not about them it's, it's about having these insecurities yeah you yep. can't, can't deal with 
deal with. And that's also the other side of that coin is a level of control. And, you're, and these people are losing control. So they're deeply insecure, they're losing control, and then there's the spiral effect of, of it all. And they react in a way that everyone around them is, is shocked. Do you remember, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I mentioned this previously, but I remember when I was watching um, the Scott Peterson case, Lacey Peterson, his yeah, wife, sure. and how her family came out initially publicly and said there's no way that Scott has anything to do with this. Mm-hmm. They could not fathom that he did. Um, they didn't know he was having an affair, of course. And, of course, the world learned that he, was, that he killed his pregnant wife. So many of these cases are like that, where people are shocked because they have these relationships with the perpetrators, and they're like, no, these are, this is a good person. They loved my loved one. What are you talking about? And then there's that turn of events, and it changes everybody's world. Everybody's world is flipped upside down. Faith, is, is it getting harder? Is it, is, uh, are people much more angry? They certainly seem to be the anger level of everybody right now, uh, at least as far as I feel it. Is might be at an all-time high. Is this? This I just here's what I'm. I guess I'm, what I'm asking you, uh, Ms. Jenkins, is I wouldn't waste my energy hating someone. If I don't like mm-hmm. someone, I just go away. I I don't want to get to the point of hating anybody because it's just taken away from my time. And who needs it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a there's a great great quote about. Uh, revenge and how acts of, with acts of revenge you're trying to hurt another person, but you may as well dig two graves, one for yourself and one for that other person. Yeah, because it, it really is about these people not only ruin the lives of the families but their own because they they you you didn't want someone to move on or, or this is the decision you tried to make in their relationship and then you go away because all of our cases are false. These are not cold cases. And so all of them, there's a resolution in the end, and you see someone held accountable, and that accountability is life in prison. Yeah, and I don't want to go to prison, Faith. i got to be honest with you. I visited many friends in prison, and I don't want to live in a prison. i got to be right up front about that, right? Well, most don't, and I would say the people in our cases don't either, and that's why the cover-ups are pretty interesting. It makes total sense. You have to come back more often, Faith. I'd love to talk to you more about divorce court. Uh, how people, but I, 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 I do, I would like to take a look at people realizing we're going to have to back off some of this, you know, discord and hatred and all the rest of it, because it's just making the world a much more violent place and they got to calm down faith. Don't you think? I, I agree. I agree. And, and I, I don't host divorce court anymore. Um, I've, I've moved on to kill a relationship. I don't, I, you know, it's the, the two sides of the same coin because it's still about, people's relationships at the at the worst, unfortunately. But, yes, I think that we – I wrote a book, by the way, and it's a relationship book called Sis Don't Settle, and that book was my way of talking about all of these things and the, the how in moving about the world in relationships, how to navigate when things aren't going well and how to handle that because it really should be – you should be able to move and even though you're in a painful situation, you should be able to process it better and move forward and still live a, a full life. Absolutely. Now, to cover my own butt, Faith, I will read what it says on the descriptor. It says, she is now at the helm of the longest-running court show on TV, Divorce Court, where she helps couples resolve their personal and legal disputes with their tough love of pro-. That was actually in the descriptor, so that's where I got Divorce Court from. So you might want to tell yes, them to cut that, that, cut that part out. Yeah, that's just a, it probably just needs to be updated because it's just, you know, just a recent update. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure that, that, that uh, so Oxygen's Killer Relationship with Faith Jenkins, airing Sundays, 8 p.m. Central Time. Faith, come back very, very soon. Wonderful talking to you. Thank you for your time. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Uh, Kevin, you find her attractive at all? Uh, Okay, who we got here? <laughs> Little Miss Faith Jenkins. Okay. Uh, sir, you are in a committed relationship. I'll take that. Because I'm not. Says the, girl, says the girl that wanted, who's a Twins player you wanted to, like, have? Byron Buxton. Yeah. And also, I would include Justin. He's we, hurt if again. If I ever can yeah. just. He's hurt again. Sorry, I did not mean to start the Twins talk. Well, maybe, oh, God, way to go, Kevin. You know, maybe I'm into no, I'm that pissed wounded off. bird. You give me this back for it. I don't know. I'll it's take, wrong. Give it to me. Oh, oh no, I hate when people do that. Hey, Judd. 
Hi, Brittany. What's going on? Nothing. Judd's with us, too. Tevin's here. Judd's yeah. here. Everybody's here. Everybody. That's how it should be. Um, they didn't give me a descriptor for you because it would be, you know, he's still working at KDAN up there. You, would your descriptor be correct or wrong? For me? Yes. Oh, for uh, for my descriptor. It would probably be wrong. Yeah, probably. It, might be it probably would be wrong. Yeah, I wouldn't update it or something would happen. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't say, like, how I rarely update, like, my Twitter profile thing. So I got to show I got to show Brittany something. Look at what time it says the interview was. Uh, nine fifty. Yeah. Okay. So when was ten minutes? Yeah. So it's it's actually going to happen soon. Yeah. It's just so an eight. That's supposed to be an eight. It was in the eight o'clock hour. Yeah. Well, you can being, put an eight on there. Be professional. Did you make yeah. this up? Whenever. Did, did we miss? Did we, did we miss the interview? I don't did, think no, we, we missed the not. interview. Jesus. So I think it we're okay. okay. Just get yeah. it right next time. <laughs> so whenever <laughs> it says nine fifty, I'll tell you the well, stem of all this. We'll rerun it at nine fifty then. Yeah. Uh, no, because Don McMillan will get very mad at us so if we do. We'll have them both on. Just some insight, because Tom felt like he verbalized something that was wrong, even though it was not his fault. Now he's attacking everybody. I know. And guess what? I hate, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just telling you to do your goddamn job. What's Tom, wrong with that? you are in a safe space, and we love you. Oh, <laughs> God, here we go. Just take a deep breath. Here we um, go. Can I ask Judd a question? Nope, you're out. Nope. All right. You're out of the mix. <laughs> I'll show myself off. A lot of consternation hey, on this show. What did I say? I just did an interview at 9.50, which means it's 10 o'clock. See you tomorrow. <laughs> now, you still have the family podcast, so just pretend we're the family. Well, I'll just wait around. I'll just wait around. Um, a blip, blip, if we're pretending blip. that we're the family, can I have some money? Right. <laughs> oh, boy, you've been around my family, haven't you? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Apparently, he's been... He's been in attendance before. <laughs> that was a good move. You know, I, I do talk to Catherine about that. I said, are we doing the right thing? Or I shouldn't say we because I'm the one who does it. But am I teaching our children some bad habits? I think we're past the point of teaching your children much. First yeah. off, they... In they, their 30s? Yeah. Too late. Like, I think... <laughs> it might be a little I think too that late. window might be shut a little bit if you're... <laughs> Right. I mean, because like, they had jobs growing up, like when they were they younger, did. right? Yeah. So it's like it would be different if it was just sit at home and here's a thousand dollars to go buy yourself something nice. How do you know job. that? That just happened yesterday. <laughs> you <laughs> literally know. nailed it. Somebody yep. needed a thousand dollars yesterday. You, have you been talking to my family? I have not, but I think I need to get adopted into your you family. Let me see. You're your working on it. Yeah. I'm if all I, in on this one. Right. Hey, Tom, can I borrow? You know, I, oh, I mean, it's not borrow. Can I, okay, have? can I have? It's not borrowing. <laughs> you know, Believe I'll take me. 250, 500. I don't well, need a thousand dollars. I think my favorite was I can't remember who if it was Andy or um, Alex, but they were like saying how they were going to need to go buy something, and you were like, "Oh, you can u use my credit card," and they're like, "Oh no, I was already." planning on doing it. Yeah, that was Alex. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was already planning on using your American Express. Don't worry about it. But think of the credit they're building for you. Mm -hmm. Credit? <laughs> and it's credit. You're it's so lucky. Your credit score? Yeah. Immaculate. Mm -hmm. My credit score is really good. Yeah, I... Uh... It is very good, that's true. The only reason I know that is because I bought that car from Dougie over at Flagship. Flagship Ford. Nice. I saw my credit ratings like, damn, I've been paying my bills, mm -hmm. apparently. That's good. We love that. Glad to see that. Keep doing that. Um, you know one thing I don't like about the credit score, and I want to get the take of all, all you people on the show, the, the four of you. I hate it when you go buy a house and your credit score goes down. I, well, there's a yeah. lot of... What the of, hell is that? Yeah. It's all a scam. Because even like it buying, is, buying it? like a car, if you like your credit score goes down... Really? Well, they right, just... when they run your credit, like it's going to go down a little bit, and if obviously it goes back it. out. Yeah, if they yeah. I was going to say so... they use that they are they're, they're really adamant about having these places now where you can check it without going down. But before, you're right. If you even checked your credit mm -hmm. card, if you're trying to be vigilant, yeah, yep. it would go hey, every time you check it, it goes down a little yep. bit. What? Damn. So, yeah. yeah, I just bought a car last week, and when I got my FICO score, it was eight oh one. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. I'm like, look at me, that baller. So when I was on the phone with the lady from my bank, she's like, so what is your credit score? I'm like, 801. And then 90 <laughs> seconds later in the conversation, she goes, we looked at TransUnion, and it's actually only 756. I was like, shut up. Shut 756 up. is still it's, good, it's isn't it? It's still right. past 720, lady. Exactly. Also, how is you know? not having credit a ding, too? Like, oh, yeah, it, that's insane. It's all yeah. a scam. Like, if you don't have credit, well, that's bad. But if you have some credit, well, that could still be bad. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all... 
What's the top score? Is the top score like 900 or something? I think it's nine. I think it's exactly 900. I thought, exactly. I thought like 825 is the t- is top. 825 or 850. But I could. I think, yeah. But either way, if, as long as it's above 720, it's basically impeccable credit. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I know like, yeah. so when I worked at a car dealership, it was if you were over 700, it didn't matter if you were 800 or 750, you yeah. get the same rate as everybody yeah. else. Mm-hmm. So once so, you, like over 720, yeah, at a certain point, it doesn't really matter. Well, I'm kicking it then, man, because I saw mine yet. Oh, boy. Now we're talking. <laughs> I'm going to sit at 701 for the rest of my... If it doesn't matter if I'm 900 baby. or 701, I'm yep. going to sit at 701. Take it down. Exactly. Take it down and then be just pleased right there. Right, yep. I love that. Mm-hmm. On my banking app, it says 850 tops out. Oh, I thought, that, I thought yeah. you were just trying to like humbly brag about what your yep. credit score. No, was. no, that's not mine. It's just showing me what it could go to. It honestly got tops out at eight fifty. On mine, it says yeah. Oh, well, that, but that would be everybody's, wouldn't it? Not just yeah, yours. Yeah. So. What, it, well, it's it, a sliding scale for black people too. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. zero mm-hmm. to ten. That's it. <laughs> It all works out in the end. <laughs> why why eight fifty though? That's a really arbitrary. It weird is. Yeah. Thing. I don't know. Like why not nine hundred? A thousand? Why eight fifty? Yeah, it's eight forty-seven. That's where we top out. We won't go above eight forty-seven. <laughs> Bunch of crap. It makes total sense. Can I ask my Judd question yet? Have I earned? Can I? Like, yeah, you know what? After the research of the into the credit score, you can ask one question. Thanks, you, can, Kevin. you can ask him anything you want, except for about this team. I think it's the I don't even Twine or yeah. something. Yeah. I don't know how to don't say worry. their name. I wouldn't ask about them. Oh Jesus. Uh Judd, can you give me any insight about this Live PGA merger? Perfect. Ooh, good That's question. what I want. Yep. Good That's question. what I want here as well. Uh, yeah, the Saudis won. The, <laughs> they did. The, P- yep. the PGA spent how long? Two years basically mm-hmm. saying this is going to go away. Don't it, it, Encouraging their players not to take enormous payments to join it, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, guys like McElroy remained loyal. Bash yes. PGA yep. didn't take... I think Tiger was offered, you know, like $11 million just to jump. And, I mean, he can b- barely play now just because he's so hurt. Right. And he didn't. And yesterday, out of nowhere, I guess the players had no warning. There was nothing. Um, they announced that they have merged, what, the European Tour, the PGA Tour, and the Live Tour. It's one mm-hmm. of the dirtiest, like, Tom, you you t- talk about politicians yeah. and just, like, scumbag people. Mm-hmm. This is one of the biggest scumbag moves of all time. Of all time 100%. in sports. It, it honest is. to God is. And and it's the Saudis. Like, these are, these are awful human beings. Like, these are, you know, they have people killed. They're tied to terrorist attacks. Yep. And yet the PGA Tour, basically without telling a soul, just basically said, ask yep. it. Sold out. Yep. Uh, a good friend of mine, Judd, is uh, Jason Fisher. He's an analyst for the NBA, and he's also one of the commentators for Live Golf. And I texted him yesterday when I saw the headline, and I sent it to him. I said, is this real? I thought this was some sort of Babylon B fake headline. And all he texted me back was, this is so wild, I don't understand it. And I go, I have so many questions. And he goes, we all do. Yeah. yeah. And, like, yeah. and if I'm a PGA player like Roy, Rory McIlroy, for example, who <sighs> passed up on probably hundreds of millions of dollars in potential winnings over the last two years if he right. would have performed on live, mm-hmm. and now I go to bat for the PGA and turn down all this money just for you guys yeah. now to go around my yep. back and accept all this dirty money. Money, like, money, I mean, money. It's all it is. It's money. awful. And the commissioner just, you know, completely sold all of those guys out Mm -hmm. because now it's like and 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 they're gonna bring now all of the live guys are going who who had become despised you know for the most part or a bunch of them are all going to come back in with their huge payments being made and they're going to come back into the tour and nobody knows how it's going to work so i have a question for you guys so you guys are upset that in a certain country starts with saudi and ends in arabia that you get thrown off a building because you're gay you have a problem with that really and that does happen, by the way. Being a homosexual sure. in Saudi yeah. Arabia is not a good thing for your health. Uh, why do we do business with people who murder other people? I, although because America's doing they, that now every day, too. So, And because they have enough m- money to buy it their money. way in. I, that's money. the only thing. Yep. That's it's the only money. thing, right? Threats and money. But this one is really bad. I, I, th- this is it not is. some small... Oh boy, that's surprising, or that's slightly shady. This is just out and out as shady as it's going to get. It's disgusting. 
I probably I have not I haven't watched a lot of golf recently. Anyway, I used to watch all the time. Like in Tiger's heyday, I used to watch them all the time. And there were other people. Phil Mickelson was interesting to watch, and a lot of other people actually. But I, I just haven't watched in quite some time. And now I may never watch golf again. I, I what do I want to watch that filth for? Right? Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah. Uh, it just makes me very, very sad that money, 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 all that anyone cares about in this world now is money. Has it always been that way? It's just more apparent now? I think so, yes. Probably. Yeah. And I, I, think- I do. I think the social, so I, I think the amount of coverage of things now and social media platforms like Twitter and things like that, I think because it's so immediate, it's easy. It's easier for us to get our heads around the disgusting nature of people now. Yeah, which I think has always it's been true. there, but I but it wasn't in our our faces previously. Like right now on Twitter, you can you know every single day I see three or four uh, things of people walking into stores and causing problems, right? Or a yeah, fight oh God, in yes. a McDonald's or something like that. I'm sure that that stuff always existed. But previously, we didn't at least see it, and now, and now, as soon, soon as a fight breaks out, somebody pulls out their phone. Right. They don't try and help. They pull out their phone. They record it and stick it on Twitter. It's much worse than it's ever been, though, because I grew up obviously in, you know, a little bit of a low end area. All the rest of it, I never saw any of that stuff. You go into Wool F W Woolworths down there. Nobody was fighting, oh. throwing things around. That just Lord. never happened. This is a new thing, and it's supposedly, and it's not really tolerance. They claim it's tolerance. It's not. It's money. Uh, I Look, if anybody has fallen for any of this BS, this presidency thing that's such a joke now on both sides, uh, they're arguing now, this thing between Gavin Newsom and, and Ron DeSantis, and they're arguing back and forth, California and Florida and blah, blah, blah. The only reason you're arguing over that is because then the only reason you're letting all those people in is because you assume they will then vote for you. This is all about power and votes and money. They don't give a rat's ass about those people. They're votes. They see votes. That's all they see. Right? Yeah. I'm, the whole thing is, yep. the whole thing, unfortunately, and like this live PGA thing is just probably the latest high profile example of it is it's all about greed now. And I don't know, I'm I'm sure it always has been to a certain degree, but it just feels to me like it's put in our face continually now. Like you would really have to be a poly Anna personality to look around and think "Ah, things are absolutely fine. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I just love the fact all these politicians, they hang in politics all their life, and then they leave, and they're billionaires. How did you become a billionaire as a yeah. politician, for Christ's sake? That's a really good point. It's disgusting. Money, you're supposed money, to money. serve, right? Yeah, you're supposed you're to serve supposed the to people. serve your constituents. Yeah. Instead, you end up owning six houses and a, <sighs> and a private jet. I just, I, this is, we really don't need any more of this, but what are you going to do? Such is life. So we talk about the twins. I don't want to talk about the twins, though, because they suck right now. And they've sucked for about a month, Judd. But you know what, Tom? Here, here's my point, though, okay? So when, when we talk about politics, and there's a lot of just flat-out depressing things. Yeah, there There's are, a lot right? of flat-out. You know what? It's fun. It's fun to bitch about sports. Well, it is. It's That's fun true. to bitch about yep. the twins. I mean, at least we can then rally around a common cause and all agree that right now this team's an abomination. And they're in first place. And I have a question. Because I didn't watch the Twins game when Byron Buxton got hurt. But last I checked, he was just running, like, he was just DHing, correct? Yes. Yes. That's How did correct. he get a rib contusion <laughs> while, while DHing? That fella can get hurt, man. I'll There's, tell you that. I saw the he alert got hit on my, yeah, I, in the ribs oh, okay. by a pitch, Tevin. He oh, got hit no. square in the go. ribs. Mm. No. Ouch. Yeah. That would hurt. Sorry, Brittany. You're. Boyfriend got hurt. That's yeah, uh, it's okay. Well, he's resting up at my house right now. We're just making sure, you know, he gets his off his feet, and uh, we, me and Justin, are both giving him rib massages. <laughs> Unbelievable. It really I is. I cannot with you. I cannot. <laughs> Honest to God, Brittany oh. Buxton. There's a good name. Yeah, I think we all would take Bebe. his last name. What's going on, BB? I wouldn't take the last name Buxton. I'm never marrying him. He wants me to marry him, and I won't do it. I'm glad you put your foot down on that. 
Well, you could hyphen. Bernard right. Buxton yeah, is Bernard beautiful. Bernard Buxton, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. TBB? TBB? Yeah, that's yeah. Like Bernard Brandt. Same yeah. story. Right? Yeah, Bernard Brandt Buxton. We'll hyphenate everybody. Oh. Everybody we'll goes Bernard Alex, Brandt Buxton. Add another one. Alex, Alex has Brandt, three Bernard right Buxton. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Alex you're going to have three. four. That's right. That's absolutely true. So I, I only watched about an inning of the game last night because I got home a little late and they were already down seven to nothing. So I'm like, okay, well, that's great. I, they just suck right now. When you are striking out, so they, they are on pace. I, I saw a uh, note in the Star Tribune story today about the game. They are uh, on pace to become the only team to strike out more than 1,600 times in a season. 27 strikeouts. You sent that to me last night. 20, 28? 28 16 now. on Sunday. Oh, 12, on Mon- 12 on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> they have 625. Oh, They're averaging man. 10 per game. This is... Oh. This is an unbelievable mm. lack of any ability to have what, what we like to call plate discipline. And how does nobody pay for this? Like, I don't I care. Know. The hitting coach, fire him today. Just do something. Do something. Get something. To... I just keep it. It keeps popping in my head. I'm sorry, but it's the old Rodney Dangerfield. Baldelia, Italian, huh? Stick to the tumbling. He should be a tumbler instead of a head coach. What do you think? Or manager, I guess. He's not a head coach. Baseball has managers, not head coaches. Yes, yes they get very upset if you uh, call them a coach. But Yeah, they do, yeah. I just I don't understand, again, how nobody is paying a price for this. I know. You, you, are, you are basically going up there and strike. Well, not basically. You are going up there and striking out 10 or more times a game, which is phenomenally yeah. putrid. And we just keep coming back to the ballpark with the same old things. How is Max Kepler here, as I talked about yesterday? What is Carlos Correa even doing? He had a double last night, but he struck out again, I think, once or twice. Yeah. And do you know? Do you guys know what would have happened if Correa actually hadn't failed his physical with the Mets, with the tabloids there, with Correa playing like oh, this? Yeah. If he was he playing like this for the Mets. He would get destroyed if he was in the New York market. He would, yeah. He'd be on the front page of the yep. sports section every day just getting absolutely Hung out in the street, tarred and feathered. I love that about the New York media, by the way. They're just very, yes. very honest. It's like, mm-hmm. you suck. I love that. And But then they'll also flip the switch back to we love you once yeah. we oh, make yeah. Like, if you are yep. a star there, then the, yeah, it's the best place in the world. But if you're bad, <laughs> just pack your stuff and leave. Aaron Judd got hurt, I saw. Yeah, he got hurt against, against the Dodgers. So he, uh, don't know if you guys saw this, he actually collided with that fence in right field yes. where there's a gate. And he's so big and strong that the gate opened. I guess that gate hadn't been opened in years. It was like <laughs> stuck. <laughs> and so the Dodgers are now like, well, we're going to fix it now. It's like, yeah, thanks a lot. One of the best players just got to hurt you morons. But I guess that gate had been just basically stuck or hadn't been opened in years and years because that, that place is old. And so, yeah, he he pried it open by accident by essentially slamming into it and got hurt. So. You know what I kind of miss, actually, because maybe they do do say, but I haven't heard him say, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at Chavez Ravine. I used to love it when they used to talk about Chavez Ravine back when I was a kid. I don't think they call You know what? I don't think they do anymore. You're right. That is a, I love that ballpark. Yeah, I've been there a bunch of times. That is a, it's old now, but it is a great, in fact, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think that is now the third oldest ballpark in the big leagues. I think it goes Fenway, Wrigley, Oh, Dodger Stadium. Makes sense, yep. I love those old stadiums, man. Wrigley is another one. God. Because well, isn't Dodger Stadium, like, up on the hill, kind of overlooking, like, the, whatever, the Chavez Ravine or whatever you're yeah, I think naming now, right? Yeah. right? yeah, it's, like, yeah. in the middle of nowhere in, yeah. in L.A. Indeed. I, I just want my team back. We've got a great baseball stadium. Target Field is a magnificent baseball stadium. Start playing some baseball. Get off your ass and get some middle relief. And get somebody that can hit, for Christ's sake. Yeah, just make hey. contact. I think that we, we need to go back to the idea that we talked about in April, Tom, which is we need to get a group together to go out there, get some halfway decent seats, and just ride that team verbally until they just <laughs> melt. Our, they're like, okay, Don't, no I'm boss, off, no off. boss, we'll hit, I love we'll hit the ball. Let, of course, by you. We need you to recreate your Met Stadium days. That's what we need. What was Without the beer, of you ever heard the name Harvey Cancer Mouth Brown? 
You ever heard that name? No. Look it up. Harvey Cancer Mouth Brown was a Boston Red Sox fan who, when the team wasn't winning, used to ride those people like there's no tomorrow. Look it up. You would love Harvey Cancer Mouth Brown, the worst thing. And I can't use the same language he used because it's offensive. But he was <laughs> yes. yelling at Jim Rice one time because apparently Rice struck out. One of the great... And by the way, here's a man who could snap a bat in half that wasn't cracked. So what does that tell you? I don't think yep. you ought to be messing with him. No. But he said, hey, hey, Jim, Jim, can you hear me? And you kind of see Rice's shoulders go up a little bit. He goes, your name is Rice, isn't it? You know where Rice comes from? Out of a Chinese guy's ass. Only he didn't say Chinese guy. So oh, I guess, man. I guess. He got a little upset, but that's what this guy did. He would deliver lines like that every day, all game long. He Harvey Cancermouth Brown, look it up. I'll find it. Oh my no. God! There's... Yeah, I I just think some good old fashioned Bernard, uh, get your bleeping act together. That's good. Insert the name. I think that's all we need here. But but my God, this is your because you're right. This division sucks. You're never gonna have a better chance the starter yep. uh last night was not great but for the most part the starting pitching has been really really good mm -hmm. like everything is coming together here to at least make the playoffs and these jokers have what four runs in the last four games yeah do you think does it is it because this really isn't like a traditional baseball town like, because if you go with the Vikings are playing bad or the Timberwolves are playing right, bad, like right. the Wild are playing bad, like they'll get booed, they'll get heckled, all that. But like Twins games, I feel like they're not really, do people not care enough to. May, you might be right boo? about that. The baseball is nowhere near as big as it used to no. be. I mean, nationally, it's nowhere near as big a sport as it used to be. It was the national pastime forever. But uh, the NFL has kind of taken that spot now. No question about it. I don't know. I, I love baseball. I'm a huge Twins fan. I always have been a huge Twins fan. But it's just when they're playing like this, they drive me crazy. For, they can't do anything right right now, Judd. No, and Tampa Bay's really good, too. Their, their problem yeah. is this. Yep. So they are they are right now, what, 30, 31 and 30? They are um, they're going to play two more in Tampa and then go to Toronto for three. There's a very good chance that they're going to, to come back, potentially in first place. At least a couple games under 500. Yeah, I think you're right about that. I think that's exactly that? what's going to happen. It shouldn't. We got to take a break here. Be right back in a couple of minutes. Correct. Uh, we got a spot here, right? We'll be right back in a couple of minutes more with Judd and Tevin. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. All right. Even though that where the Twins are taking us on a roller coaster, your scale is not Judd. Tell us how you're doing that. That is uh, a, a very simple plan, thanks to my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers. Dropped 40 pounds a couple of years ago. And the great thing is that they not only help you drop the weight, but their uh, nutrition, nutritionists and dietitians are going to help you keep that weight off. And that, of course, is the most important thing. How would you like to lose up to 15 pounds or more by the 4th of July? You can do exactly that. Join today, and you're going to get eight weeks free as well. That's right, eight weeks free, and the weight is going to come off, and most importantly, it's going to stay off. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. Eight weeks free, the weight comes off, and like I said, the most important thing is then the weight stays off. You know, I love Aerosmith. I always have, and I always will. Yeah, that's even if you're not a classic, that song... It's just a great song. Comes, comes on the right point of your yep. life, and you just want to aggressively walk. Hot take. Is oh. classic rock overrated because the genre, and I know this is the wrong group of people to be saying this in front of, but they, <laughs> like, stop making classic rock songs. Like, where's, it's like, what's your newest classic rock? Like, that style of music. Well, no, let's be honest. Your people have ruined music. My people have invented music. <laughs> yeah. And by, by you people, he means young people, okay? Yes, I mean. Yes, I mean. Young by, people. By you, I mean. <laughs> that almost caused me, I think, had a non-wet spit take. Yeah. That was, that was intense. Um, you know, I think a lot you of can, can think... you just say rock? Right, okay, it can't so be classic. Rock, like, right. It's like saying, like. But I'm saying, like, classic rock is definitely a very specific 
type of rock and roll it that is, it yeah. feels yeah. like isn't made today anymore. Well, yeah, because it's classic. Yeah, no, it's, see, it's the word yeah, right there. Yeah, because classic rock wasn't specifically but classic I, rock. They okay. made cla- they made rock, and then rock had to become classic rock because they had to make a genre of something for radio stations to be able because you can't just say it's a rock station. Yeah, it had to be classic rock. Yeah, so that's, that's where true, the yeah. but there are bands out there right now that are definitely doing more of that traditional timeless rock sound oh, okay. that Love are it. just destroy. I think they are so good. Great guitar playing again, because we kind of lost that for a while. Yeah. It was a lot yeah. of electronic. Yeah, yep. yeah. I there's hate a, that stuff. There's an episode of hate 30 it. Rock where this girl, one of the girls on the show is like, are you going to come see my band tonight? And he's like, the last time we saw your band, you sat on stage with a laptop and just filed your fingernails. Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, is okay. Yeah. I didn't know they were still making like rock, like the that style. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what we got to recover now. And I, I should mention, by the way, three times in my life now, and I think you know about one of them, three times in my life, it, I don't know, we were places, I don't even remember, but I have been asked if you're Andy. If I'm Andy? Yes. I'll People take for that. some reason think that you're Andy. I mean, he types a lot faster. He's a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> I think I can jump higher than him. But that boy can <laughs> yeah, type fast, can I will tell you. I that. know. Like, Andy type, looked man. that up, and he's already spitting out the answer. Okay, now that we're on to the, uh, the fact you were talking about classic rock and all the rest of it, is R&B ever going to come back? Because I am a huge R&B fan. I love rhythm and blues music. Yeah, but I it's don't just think, gone. I don't think it get like, the old school R&B, but yeah, like the new age kind of stuff is is good, but yeah, the old school days of like singing your heart out in that emotion and kind of that classic R&B song, sound. Would you do me not. a favor? Would you look for the song Love Won't Let Me Wait? Is it Love Won't Let Me Wait, I think is the name of the song. It's one of the most beautifully sung R&B songs of all time. Very emotional. And I miss that. Now it's all like your sister's a whore. Oh, boy, that's entertaining. <laughs> Talking about, uh, let's see, so there's a version from Major Harris, and there's also one from Luther Vandross. Major Harris was the big hit. Okay. Yeah, like the Luther Vandross oh, days, we're not going to get that back. No. No. But, no, yeah, no. today's R&B is, is good. It's not, it's not what it used to be, but it's, it's solid. What do you hear him sing? Major Harris was a phenomenal singer. I'm not kidding you. And, and he... At the very end, Rudy, when he starts going, no more, it's like, oh, my God, man. It just nails you right in the chest. Uh, I just happened to come across this. You can tell that this is definitely made from, like, the 70s because it is a minute and 57 seconds before it gets to actually any lyrics. (laughs) 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 But here's here's a little taste of Love Won't Let Me Wait. Now move a little closer to me. Come on, Brittany. Oh, it's a good thing I'm wearing a long shirt today. This is this is velvety, isn't it? Yeah. Just out of curiosity, do you guys have a list of songs that you like to uh, you know light a candle to and, and hang out you with your significant other? You turned others? my song down to say that. <laughs> um. I was what, kicking. What, it's with so that funny song. you said that. My husband's gonna hates when I bring this up, but uh, we were. Uh, going to have some ovulation sex and what? uh what? <laughs> wow that's a lot of information yeah. there no. why I mean, me it's fine of course you asked a simple you. question and you went with that no and i said should we turn on some music because it's it's the thing that sucks about it is it has to be scheduled right and so, you, it, and so i said do we you want to i was trying to like still make it sporadic right, even though we time? literally have a calendar that says mm-hmm. it time is now time is now impregnate your wife and so I was like trying to think of ways to like make it still romantic. And so I was like, oh yeah, do you want to have some music? And he was like, no, not at all. And I was like, you monster. Did you marry a serial killer? I don't like, know. Ooh, I Let, like I don't it. Let's know. just get this done. The ball right. game's who on. Doesn't, who doesn't want music? I guess. Yeah, that's. But then I was like, own. also, I mean, we've been playing a lot of like pop and Taylor Swift, so I'd be really scared of like what would be the first on the <laughs> Sonos list where it would be like, maybe he's right. But yeah, all right. So we got to close the song up because he goes, "Love won't let me wait." Yeah, let me just find. Oh, it. The, God, is he a great singer? The reason why we have to pull it down is that if we play too much, we get booted off. No, of YouTube, I know you're right. Don't, then, yeah. don't pop it back yeah, up. You know, so. you were absolutely right about that. I keep forgetting that uh, I work here now, where they actually pay their bills. <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a big difference. 
Um, yeah, there's a uh, there's some really good stuff out there right now. Oh, like uh, Miguel, I don't know if you've oh, ever... Oh, Miguel is <laughs> top tier. I saw Miguel open up for Sia at the Target Center one night, and I had never heard of him. And man, that guy is... He looks... In, he has like... Prince's frame. He's very diminutive okay. and slender. Yeah. All right. Also out there in high heels, just dancing up a storm. And then you put on that, and then the weekend, and yep. boy, that is if that's you, baby yeah. making. If music. you want, if you want some like the old school vibes, Miguel's Adorn. Yeah, a few years old now, but or well, I guess more than a few years old. But yeah, that song, top tier. That that'll bring you back to your old school R and B days. Yeah. How about bow wow wow yippee yo yippee yay bow wow yippee, yippee yo yippee, yippee yay? I love that song. I feel pregnant just listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, was there a '70s version of that song? Or are you talking about the Snoop Dogg version from the '90s? No, the Snoop Dogg. Oh, no, sure. Okay, yeah. Well, I love that song. What, mm-hmm. No, who was the original? That's uh, back in the Atomic 70s? Dog. Didn't they do? That's Atomic the original. Yeah. Don't you talk about right? That, but that's Snoop the flash one. Yeah. Flashlight. Yeah. A less romantic version of Snoop Dogg is he does have a kids album that we listen to a lot. Does he kill anybody really? in it? Uh, no. He's got affirmation songs and wheels on the bus. And uh, you should look it up. Interesting. Rudy, it He's is. He's murdered well, two people. Don't worry about and it. He's also fan. teaching my child self esteem. Oh, right. God. Have she dual likes plicity. murderers. Well, well, I don't go go dogs. He did, he did a version of the uh, wheels on the bus. Oh, the wheels on the bus slaps. going around and around. I can hear it now. Well, and similarly to that, the Yin Yang Twins, if you're familiar, they also did a Christmas. Yeah, yeah, they did a Christmas album. Oh, Good for them. And it sounds exactly how you would ex- expect it to sound. Like they, Do they know what Yin Yang means? I don't know. Probably not. It's not positive. They probably, isn't it Yin Yang like the Chinese symbol? No, it's like you dumbass Yin Yang. Oh, no, yin-yang is like the... Yin-yang. I know, yin-yang, yin-yang, I'm sorry that I added the G, but I know it's yin-yang. But that's that symbol that means, right, like... Right, the black and white the yin symbol. And the yin and right, yeah. yeah, I know. But to be a yin-yang or a yin-yang is not a good thing. Oh. Okay. Well, I think they just meant the symbol. But anyway, yeah. they... <laughs> <laughs> we both go, and that's how they meant, though. Right. We just... Yeah. Ex- well, what is it? Is it... It was one of the old National Lampoon's movies. He comes up and he goes, the hell's wrong with you, you yin, yin-yang? He says yin-yang in that one. Hmm. Because it's, uh-huh. it's in one of the National Lampoon movies, I know that. Uh, before Judd has to take off, Judd will give you a taste of Wheels on the Bus from Snoop Dogg. Here you go. Let's hit the class. Wheels on the bus go round and round. What? Yeah. yeah. Wheels on the bus go round and round. Why me? Uh- Oh, right. This might be the only time I want to see a bus crash. <laughs> I agree with you. Oh, but I'm telling you, Affirmation Song, it is amazing. And honestly, you should listen to it every day. He's a hype. murderer. Yeah, you can. And you're making money not for everybody's You can perfect. multitask. Not everyone's perfect. <laughs> not everyone's That's perfect. real. Nice. <laughs> oh, he killed a couple people, so what? Whatever, he, he makes my children's he has, music. He has cashed in incredibly, though. Like in mainstream stuff now. Corona commercials, yeah. this... He's like become. He has transcended his personality and character to, to this ma- mainstream. He must make just a ton off of folks like me who know nothing about him and are like, hey, it's Snoop Dogg. Remember his commercials he did for Chrysler? Mm, he no. was the voice of Chrysler for a while. Huh. If to ride is fly, you must buy. Oh, sure. <laughs> Done. Yeah. So I'm not my making money. that up. Yeah. He actually said that take in a commercial. I-, I looked it up. It says that in 2023, <laughs> he is worth $165 million, and I feel like that's low. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. $165 million from nothing. Yeah. Crazy. That's amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, what the hell? There's a I lot of life. there's a lot of crappy kids music out of there and uh, in out there, and so it's nice when all of a sudden you go, all right, it's not so bad. So, so are your kids like waiting for Snoop Dogg to drop his next? Yeah, we're actually he's already done album? Volume Two yeah. oh, okay. of uh, it's the Dog Pack, and uh, he's already done in Volume Two, so we're waiting for Volume Three. Okay, yeah. he's got, oh, a, yeah. wow. got a new book called Hey God, It's Me Snoop. That'll be coming out there. Yeah. Yeah. Being That's turned into a there. movie yeah. very soon. Yeah. He's a lot going quicker on, than the first one. Going on tour, doing shows at playgrounds, performing his well, we would kids' show album. Up. We'd show I up. Feel like, I feel like the the children's music and, and, and films that were put out there for a kid like me in the 70s really dried up when they stopped smoking as much dope and doing them. Yeah. Because yeah. I... 
I feel like in my day, it was just a bunch of adults who were high as kites. Yeah. And like, hey, let's try this. And and then it, it was songs that we had no idea what the meaning was, but they were really, you know, kid friendly. They like, sounded great. Puff the Magic like Dragon. The, like, yes, yes. Yeah. Puff the Magic Dragon. All of those late, like late 60s, early 70s shows that Ruff, they did as well. You think Rafi smoked a lot of weed, right? Are we guessing that allegedly? Like. Oh, is that the kid? Uh, he's like an acrobat or a juggler. Or no, something. Well, he did. Rafi did Baby Beluga. Baby Beluga oh, Baby Beluga. Head. Okay, that guy. Okay. Baby Beluga in the, the deep blue sea. sea. Yeah. Uh, yep. I think H and R Puffin stuff was created uh, off of an yeah. LSD trip. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. That yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if you watch it, it's not hard now to fathom exactly that. But H R Puffin stuff was. Those people must have shown up. You know dropping acid and, and oh, yeah. stoned and all that and said, all right, let's make some good kids content. I'm fine with that, right? <laughs> oh, I don't care. Tap into that yeah. imagination. Tap into the and imagination. I'm just man. imagining now, like, your kids loving Snoop Dogg's album. They try to pull up, like, Snoop Dogg on yeah. Spotify, and then they get exposed to, like, some old-school <laughs> Snoop yeah, Dogg. Right. Honestly, That'll be great. I need Go-Go <laughs> to be well-rounded. Maybe not that well-rounded as Snoop Dogg, but... We gotta introduce some. Do you of want Gogo -Go to like run around singing "F the Police"? Is that what you're looking for? I don't not want I'll that. I'll say in today's, in today's that society, it'd probably God. be accepted. I don't even care what the message is. That's oh, hilarious. You're unbelievable. F the I, police. <laughs> Coming <laughs> straight from my crib. <laughs> there she is. She's calling in. I F mean, the police. I mean, it's that you you gotta teach them teach them young. Why not? And I don't even mean the message, but just how funny would that be? <laughs> I like that account very silent. <laughs> How funny would that? It might be funny a for a disaster. while, but then you'd have to deal with the fallout of the fact that you have to explain that a little bit. Listen, if swearing is the biggest problem I have with my kid, I would be lucky. Oh, I, I think just... it's the murder part we're talking about, not the swearing. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't want actions to happen, but if she's walking around <laughs> oh, singing, great. we all have walked around singing a song or whatever that we go, oh, yeah. we're That's not... As like, a kid, F like, these hoes, F these hoes, and I'm barely ever F them. That never hoes. happened in, nope, for, for <laughs> me, Brittany. No. Me either. Yeah, for me, it was uh, Shaggy's Wasn't Me. I was in <laughs> third <laughs> grade. <laughs> no, 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 no. Banging on the counter wasn't me. I, like, don't, don't know what any of this means. Because it caught me banging in the shower? It wasn't <laughs> me. It literally wasn't you, Tevin. No. It was never you. No, it was not. I, I was drinking chocolate milk sitting at the cafeteria table in third grade, singing Shaggy, It Wasn't Me. Shaggy. Well, we would sing That's that one. That's a great one. song, though. Uh, Love that song. That one about uh, trying to make a living while your husband's in lockdown because 20 to life is no joke. That song. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no. you know, I, just oh. love, I love how you people live vicariously. Like you're all ghetto dwellers. Oh, that's like, we, what a bunch of sure. bulls. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, in and out of lockdown. Mama smoking crack now. Uh, oh, I ain't got gee. a job I now. Go home for early. you, this is just a good time. But for me, this is what I call life. And I was like, I was this girl running around Egan yelling this as if. I listened to the Beatles. What the hell were you doing? You <laughs> lost your love. Like the Rolling Stones were probably the most harshest band I heard as a that's kid. Right. What? what what was going on with you, Brittany? I Brittany, know. let's go walk down Plymouth Avenue right after the show, and I'll go, Winchester Cathedral. <laughs> what do you think? We'll sing that over on Plymouth Avenue. I would. See that sounds they, actually a lovely day. See how they react to that one. I love it. God, I just love the fact. All these honkies. What do you think of this, Tevin? All these honkies that love rap music. They have no idea what the hell they're well, talking it's about. Not, Tevin, it's or, not like I, you were living no, this I, life. I, 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 Tevin's Osceola, whiter than I am. I grew up in Osceola, <laughs> Wisconsin. Osceola, Osceola, Wisconsin. A little That's, Amish. You're right. There was, I, I didn't live in the ghetto, but I think it's more of just a... I think rap music is, in my personal opinion, more fun to listen to than like country music or your classic rocks and things like that. Like I think it has more personality and rap does yeah our eminem we were shouting about killing our wives and yeah. hating your mother yeah hating that. your and by no means how did i want to do either of those no. things there was just a cultural mm -hmm. like acceptance of singing songs that really have nothing to do with you yeah, yeah it's amazing if you were to say well, like well, oh well. the 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 attendees of this concert were all drinking beer and smoking weed and you're like okay well is that a rock concert a country concert or a rap concert because <laughs> all be three do yep. the same yep. thing so how about you Running around singing uh, 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 surfing doo-wops, never seeing the ocean. Surfing you yeah, there we go. <laughs> go get them, Brittany. Get Thank them. you. Nice thing. Round, round, oh, get around. I get around. But do you get, get around, around, sir? Get around, get... Yeah, I'd be whooping ass. <laughs> I love surfing. Kicking, kicking white folk ass. Like, 
like. I get around. I'm getting bugged driving up and down the same old yeah. strip. I think that's a little bit different, though, than talking about, you know, like killing a guy. I, I, I mean, that's just me. But. <laughs> I think it they're is. interchangeable. <laughs> We're just getting out that aggression. Out yeah, that's good. Judd, we held you three minutes too long here. Sorry. Oh, that's, uh, that's okay. That's okay. You're, you're this is great stuff. I love this conversation. Britney's a disaster. What, what if you combine the Beach Boys and rap? I'd love it. So, so they're driving down the street shooting they their did. guns or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know what it was? It was called California Love. Mm -hmm. It's the only rap song I've ever liked. Well, California, California Love. Yeah, that's a good song. Yeah. Could you imagine the Beach Boys do, do, doing the do, 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 cruising down the street in my 6'4"? <laughs> yeah, see, it's there like you go. that, and it's like this. Oh. I took her to the pad, and we started to kill. Yeah. No, you would never yep. hear that. You know that. the song yeah. Gin and Juice? Yep. They have covers of it by like a folksy band, and it's like, Sipping on gin and juice, oh. laid back, with my mind and my money, and my money on my mind. The name of that band is called Hazy Dixie, it's and so they do good. all covers of like rap songs, rock it's songs. They're great. Yeah, so good. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this is great. All right, you guys. Can I tell you, I, I was retired on the eighth of uh... seventh. You don't want to work tomorrow. So. Not true. Oh yeah, the seventh. I'm retire on the seventh, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Jed, we'll, we'll talk, talk to, to you tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tom, be strong here. Yeah, I got to fight, man. I got to fight. With me gone, right. this is going to be a I one man hate fight. Rap music so, more than so any be other strong, man. Tom Bernard. I will do it. I'll talk Bye, Judd. Love you. you. Once again, I hate rap music because it destroyed R&B. You can't find R&B anymore. There's st there's still R&B music. We, yeah, the we old stuff, about, no well, new stuff. Yeah, the the new stuff is still like you have your Miguel's of, of the world. Yeah, I haven't like heard Miguel. Should I listen look, to Miguel? Look at Miguel. You'll, so you'll be pleasantly he's surprised. He's like an R&B guy. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I would like that then. That'd yeah. be good. I would say that's... You have to remember, honest to God, the great singers that I grew up with, holy Christ, those people could sing. Yeah, and I would say that aspect of it is definitely good. You don't have the singers that go on like the long runs and you're no, like, oh my gosh, no. this is an incredible voice. I mean, you still have those people, but it's not as common. A lot of people use auto-tune now and it's... Yeah, they do, right? It's not the yeah. same. Great singers have always impressed me. I just love great singing. Depends... It doesn't really depend on what they're singing about either, but it's just the ability that some people have. Well, Major Harris, you hear mm -hmm. that voice? You know how many people can sing like that? About 10 in the world. So, yeah. I mean, that's the big thing to me. Mm -hmm. I, well, now you have to remember, I was in a band from the time I was 11 till I was 19, so it was, it was my whole teen life was being in a band, and it was all R&B stuff, basically. I mean, we had some rock songs in there, but not a, not a ton. And because I was a drummer, I had to play Wipeout, which I hated. What? Again. <laughs> like, where do you guys practice in a garage? You, uh, at the Laurent's house. At Guy Laurent's house. Guy Laurent. We were practicing at Guy Laurent's oh, house. How high brow. I tell you what, man, it was that was a good time being in a band back then. Did people come and watch? Because even I was popular. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Did you guys have like uh, people kind of sitting? Yeah, around we had our fans and all that. That's yep, so that's fun. Cool. Oh, it was great. It was a wonderful time. Start a band in the cul-de-sac. I should get a band going to call the sack, and we'll only do rap music. Yeah, Trish. Yeah, covers of rap Step music. Step it up. Yep. Tr what? Trish is one of the people oh, who lives okay. in his neighborhood. Neff the police. That's all I have to say. <laughs> God. Okay, should we probably take a break here, huh? Yeah. Might be a good idea. We'll be right back. This is the Tom Bernard Morning Show. The new Tom Bernard Morning Show is proud to have partners like North American Banking Company, Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and attorney and advertiser Dave Bielke. I've been advertising on Tom Bernard shows for years. I like Tom, not just because he's a good guy, but because the ads I run on his show bring me new clients that are hurt at work and need legal help. Tommy B works for me. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Morning Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We talked earlier about um, Navia. a family uh, family having some problems. Tell, tell me what that is again. So last week, Chris Egger reported on this wrong way crash. It happened in right. Oakdale. Right. It ended up, uh, the father had died immediately on the scene, and their three-year-old daughter, Navia, is currently in critical care in the hospital. And they're trying to raise money to help with the memorial for the dad, and then the, all the medical expenses for Navia. And you know, so it's about fifteen thousand total. They were trying to raise fifteen thousand, and I posted the fund, the GoFundMe um, on all of our socials. Um, but we got an email from. Well, first off, ever since we mentioned it, our listeners have really stepped up 
and been donating. Really? Yes. That's which is wonderful. So cool, and they've That's shared great. the post. Um, but we got a message from Tim saying, "Good morning, Brittany. Heard you guys talking about the GoFundMe for Navia Ripka." Tom mentioned matching some donations to reach 15000 Please let me know how we can help match some donations to reach the goal. Uh, Tim uh, from, uh, is it Niemeyer? Niemeyer. Sorry. Tim's Niemeyer great, from great Trailer family. Sales. Yeah. So, great uh, family. So where are we standing now? Do you know? Yes. Uh, and again, we're, we're going to follow this, uh, make sure that this uh, gets done. But uh, I'll keep an eye on it today and tomorrow and Friday. Uh, but they are at... Six thousand six hundred and forty-seven. Okay, and it was at six thousand this morning, so it yeah. picked up about almost seven hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, we're doing. We're. we're I know they did. Their, they ran the um, KSTP did an article on them too. That was I think today, good, good. which has also got the GoFundMe in there. So we'll we'll keep an eye on it. I just yeah, three year old. And the father, it's just a lot. I just if you can do that small amount to. Give 10, 20 bucks. I know that everybody is going through stuff, but it feels good if we can help them with that one aspect. Do you have a some some way to donate money on on your computer? Yeah, or yeah. I, I donated oh, some, and, and uh, we'll uh, keep doing that. We'll do it. Right, matter of fact, right after the show. Sounds good. We'll, we'll, we'll find talk. out where yeah. it is. Well, well, because I want to get an idea of the matching, so we'll, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll work yeah, on that. Yeah, let me know because thanks, Tom. That's very very. I mean, how, so the mom is around. The mom's fine. Yeah, that was the father I, that I know of. I didn't yeah. read anything, but um, yeah. So. So here's a woman who has her baby in the hospital and her husband's dead. Yeah. Yeah, may might be time to step up and help some people here, don't you think? I just it's and it was so sad because so Alex, the father who died, who passed, oh, Alex was on his way to help a friend on the farm who needed uh, to be there by 4:30. Navia was in the back sleep seat of the car sleeping. When they were struck by a car going the wrong way. Four thirty in the morning. Yeah. I thought it was two thirty. No, so they, it was four thirty. Maybe. Okay. Well, they said he had to be there by four thirty, so maybe he was bringing. Oh, her so early. yeah, I think it was two thirty in the morning. Yeah. Don's ready to go. Thank you very much, Don McMillan, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, Don? Oh man, what a story to cut, bring me in on. That's horrible, man. I just really feel bad. Don, the great and, part yeah. of that is that I will now laugh because you and you will make me feel better. What do you think of that, Buster? Uh, I, uh, you know, uh, I'm up for the challenge, but you know, I'm, I'm an engineer, dude. I don't I know. know how somebody goes the wrong way yeah. on a freeway. Yep. I mean, how often does that happen? And I just, I want to scream when I hear that. I go, oh, yeah, man, I really, uh, man, that sucks. I, I feel for them. I, I will think of them all day today. So, uh, Don, that's wonderful. Man. That is very, very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Don McMillan with us promoting his appearance at Loons on the Lake Comedy Festival, June 21st through the 24th at Crooners in Fridley. Uh, we were just talking about this uh, last week, as a matter of fact. You're going to love Crooners. you ever been at Crooners before, Don? I have not, uh, and You'll I'm love looking it. forward to it. And I've never been to Fridley. You know, it's been my dream to go to Fridley. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand it's a magnificent uh, place. Actually, I, I'm sure it is, but this is the name Fridley. I believe it was next to Petticoat Junction. I just doesn't Fridley sound like somewhere <laughs> where Uncle Joe went? I need to go to the store. I'm going to Fridley. All right, Uncle Joe, we'll see you back here in a little while. Actually, Don, uh, our biggest advertiser on this show lives in Fridley, so I want uh, I want to thank you for being so nice to Fridley. It's very nice of you. I'm a I'm like I'm looking forward to Fridley. I really am. I, 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 first of all, I love Minnesota. I swear to God, this is not a joke. I grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, but I was a Minnesota Vikings fan. I love Fran Tarkenton. I wanted to move to the Twin Cities when I was eight. I don't. You know, I think it's because they were good. Remember, they went to the Super Bowl. That's how old I am. They went to sure. the Super Bowl back then, and sure. I was like, I rooted for them, and they always lost. Which you know, I tend to always pick the team that gets to the end and loses. Yeah. That, that's my trend. Uh, but uh, I, I, I wanted to be a Viking, and I, so I've, I, I, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for the, the, the Twin Cities. And, that is magnificent. And Fridley now. I didn't know Fridley was part of that, but now I do. Now you do. Don, by the way, will be appearing on June 24th in Fridley at Loons on the Lake Comedy Festival at Crooners in Fridley. Uh, i got to read this, Don, because it's very impressive. Don McMillan is an American comedian, actor, and former engineer based in San Francisco Bay. McMillan earned a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering from Lehigh University, a Master of Science in Electrical Engineering from Stanford University. So you're not a moron or anything, Don. That's very impressive. Me, me not talk good, but smart engineer. <laughs> That's a very good impression. No social skill, but a woman to marry me. <laughs> 
How how so how do you go from from you know attending Lehigh, attending Stanford, uh, all these ma- magnificent uh, engineering degrees and all the rest of it. So you you still do that and you do comedy? Do you both still? No, well, in a kind of a way I do, yeah. oddly, Tom, because yeah. um I quit my I, I was a chip designer, which is, you know, in the engineering world that is the most exciting of all the engineers right there. Designing chips, that's that's hot. Let me just sure, tell you there right now, sure. the engineering world. But uh so I wasn't just an engineer. I was a hot engineer. I was in Silicon Valley. You know, I was one of the. No, I, I wasn't actually. I didn't. I didn't fake. That's what it was, Tom. I didn't. Those guys are into. They live and breathe that stuff. And I wasn't. I like had. I like to tell jokes. I like to play golf. I, I'm a pretty well-rounded person. And but I, I understood that stuff. It, it comes, you know, naturally to me. But uh, I, it never occurred to me. You know, you're in not. You're not in high school and you go. Oh, okay, you got an 800 on your SATs. In math and, and you know 200 in English because I was an engineer, but they go no, you should be a comedian. They don't say that, so I I just kind of went down the engineering path and then burned out. I worked at startup companies and said uh, my last boss said you know well, what are you some kind of comedian and I went oh, thank you for the career <laughs> advice I'm out of here. I'm gone, no question. Yeah. Now you're you're coming in uh, June 24th is a Saturday. Do you, you happen to be coming in yeah. earlier? I am. I'm coming in for the festival, which starts on Wednesday. Uh, my good friend Erica Rhodes, who's so funny, sure. is headlining on Wednesday. I love Erica. She's she's uh, lives in L.A., so I I worked with her tons of times, and I think she's from that area. I'm not positive actually. Mm-hmm. I, I, need to, I haven't seen her since I saw that we're working together. But um, I'm coming in Wednesday, and then uh, there's a comedy competition involved. I'm, I, I'll probably get sucker, suckered into judging that, which is just my favorite thing to judge other comedians. You know that sure, is, you know, fantastically fun. Um, I, but it, it's it, comedy competitions. I actually have done a, a few of them. I did Star Search. I did the San Francisco Comedy Competition. Mm-hmm. And as a comic, it's a great way to really build your comedy. If you can, it's the pressure. You know, the pressure of a competition. And if you can be funny on that, then you know you prove yourself. So that's going to be exciting too. Yeah, Don. If you can make it in, you got to come in and do the show with us on maybe the Friday before, since you're going to be in town anyway. Cool. That'd be I, wonderful. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be there. I would love that. I believe uh, we already got it set up with Randy to be coming in from the festival right before it starts. So if you're going to be in town, Don, yeah, I think we could probably set it up, get you a ride and everything. So that'd be, great. be awesome, yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll mm-hmm. definitely figure it out. I would, lo- I would love to. I, 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 my, my, after my dream of being a stand-up comic, I actually, uh, and Tom, I'm not coming for your job, but I actually I grew up listening to radio, and I always wanted to be, mm-hmm. I, 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 was the, I was the only 10-year-old to listen to talk radio. I loved listening to talk radio. I still do all the time. Um, and uh, I, I wanted to be a radio host, so I'd love to come and hang with you guys. That'd be cool. I, I will get out of my chair, and you can host the show while you're here. No, no, don't do that to me. I don't know, because then I don't want to do it, and my wife will hate me because I have to get up <laughs> at 3 a.m. every morning. It's changing your career yet again. Yeah, that's what she that. wants to see. That's the best thing. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But you're probably right. I love it. I love the fact, you know, it, it's it's such a skill that you have uh, 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 to be able to just relate to people just sitting there behind the microphones. And it, you, I, I was a lonely kid, and talk radio people like you made my life better. So uh, I re- not only respect what you do, uh, I, I, I wish I could do it. No, where did you live as a kid? Uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, right outside oh, that's of Philadelphia. Right. Oh, you said that. Oh, God, yeah. I love that area anyway. It's magnificent. And you had some pretty talented people in Philadelphia doing talk radio back in those days, too. Really good oh, market. Oh, it was great. It was. Yeah. No, uh, and, and I think that's why, you know, now that I listen to some of the crap that's on the air, excuse, excuse my uh, American French, um, but, uh, that, you know, I really, really appreciate great talk radio. People who can just talk to you and have conversation mm-hmm. that's just intelligent. And, uh, I mean, uh, it's just, it, what you guys do is, is – uh, uh, it's an underrated. It's so it's so underrated. Anyway, I don't need to suck up to you. You're not paying me, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could slip you a buck or two when you come in. You know, uh, it would be all, all that better situation. No, I think part of that has. To, well, go ahead. Uh, I think part of that has to do with the fact that I had a great cu- curiosity of hum- about human beings at an interesting childhood. Let me put it that way. So it's more than I think. Being good at it part comes out out of a natural curiosity and wanting to know yeah, yeah. different kinds of people and and their views. I love that. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is I I kind of do that too because I took yep. my engineering skills, and now I, I I examine human life through an engineer's eyes, which it's not pretty. Can I just tell you? That? <laughs> it's I not suppose pretty. not. 
I have I have graphs and charts in uh, uh, you know, people, people who don't know my act. I, I do PowerPoint my act since I was a former engineer, so it's a visual as well as as as, as vocal act. Um, but um, it, I, I do. I, I'm very curious too, which is why I think I, I'm drawn to what you guys do. But but no, I, I, people come up to me and they I, they say you're like a nerdy Seinfeld because I kind of pick apart life, but with graphs and charts. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of the way I do it. So. I think it's wonderful. But, yes, please do come in. When, you're going to be here at the end of the month or the last week of the month, I guess, is a better, better way to put it. But, Don, yeah. if, if you could make it in, I'd love to sit and talk to you about all these things. It was great of you to come on this morning. Again, Don McMillan promoting his appearance at Loons on the Lake Comedy Festival June 21st through the 24th. He will be on stage on the 24th at Crooners in Fridley. You're going to love it. You're going to croon. You're going to kill it. Don, I look forward <laughs> to seeing you in a couple of weeks, Pally. Yeah, hey, it's good talking to you all. Have a great day. Thanks, Don. Don McMillan. Hey, hey. Bye-bye. Did you ever work with him, Rudy? I haven't. First time, I've, uh, first time I've met him. We've had some contact over the last few days. What a n- sweet man. Hey, he seems like a very nice guy. Very man. nice guy. And uh, he does have a, uh, a great, uh, his original America's Got Talent audition when mm-hmm. he was live. Mm-hmm. He does this great Venn diagram. You should look that up. Yeah, I'll, oh, he does. I'll put it in the show notes. When uh, If you click on the show today, you'll be able to link to it. He's very funny. I love it. Anyone have any closing comments? Uh, speaking of comedy, Cy Amundsen, who couldn't make it onto the show this week, is back in town tonight at Acme. Oh, he is. Good he friend of the show. It couldn't make it in. Uh, yeah, he had some family stuff going on the last couple of no, days. I, but, yeah. I haven't seen him in a long time, but he and I used to spend a lot of time together mm-hmm. back in the day. And he's doing well with the health and everything? Yeah, from what I understand. I'm yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah, he's a he's an interesting guy. I used to love to watch. He and Catherine would get into arguments. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was just hilarious, those two arguing. Because he would do things like come in the studio, and I don't know where the hell he got it. He'd be like, a cup? A glass, a fork, a spoon. It's like, where did you even come up with that stuff? And he just leave it behind. Sure. It's like, okay, Pally. All right, that's going to do it. We will talk to you tomorrow.